What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Meaning of Podcast. I am Ace. This is RB3. And this is the podcast where we talk about your favorite filmmakers and the deeper meaning within their films. However, for the first time ever in Meaning Podcast history, we are diving into a television show. Oh. Now, if you, um, this is my disclaimer, even though it's not really a disclaimer. If you haven't seen Atlanta, feel free to keep listening. We're, not, we're gonna get into different themes of the show, but we're not necessarily trying to talk about every single moment that happens in every single episode. So don't worry about being spoiled too much or being ruined from watching the show. Just feel free to keep listening. Feel free to enjoy what we have to say about the show and the general themes of the show. Yeah, and it's not like the show is like, you know, like serialized like a lot of shit. Well, it's pretty serialized, but it's mostly each episode is like its own adventure. So it, like, it, it has characters that reoccur within every episode, but it's very much not quite like Black Mirror, which is all like one, you know, every episode is anthology. one different thing. Yeah. But it's very much a one-off episode every time. So there's not usually a continuation of a storyline within an episode. Meaning the show is more a central theme throughout the season and then different episodes that kind of relate back to that theme. Would yeah. you agree with that? I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So so feel free to keep listening and enjoy this episode. It's going to be a fun one. But before we do that and we dive into the show, we're going to dive into last week's comments where we talked about Avengers Infinity War spoiler review. And uh, RB3 and I had some hot takes back and forth and uh, we're here to say that we're officially broken up. Whoa. Uh, we're like the Beatles. Oh, it's no. over. <laughs> RB3 and I are no longer on speaking terms. Oh, this is no, the only time. <laughs> that's, how, that's how Marvel movies just divide us, bro. Yeah. No, but seriously, man, you guys are slightly passionate. Uh, y'all, y'all Twitter peeps are are pretty passionate. Yeah. Oh, too. by the way, I know you. Were all you say motherfuckers so. on Twitter, man. Like, I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw tweeted some shit about DC or whatever. I saw the tweet. Um, but I, that's kind of all. Dude, I'm telling you, all fucking week the DC fanboys have been like trying to eat my ass out, man. Like they've been like. They've been going in, you know, talking about whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck. All right. For all you DC fans out there, and listen, it's not all DC fans, but all the DCU fans, I'm blocking everybody on Twitter who has a superhero as their profile picture from now on. That's what I'm doing. I'm tired of this that, shit. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. They don't deserve to be fucking acknowledged. So. But yeah, I, I will never understand people's hate for super i don't know man it's so trivial it's like man why are you getting so worked up about that i don't know yeah it, it's, it's just, just funny because i made a off. joke and they're like oh you uh, you know yeah it's like, whatever oh, man i, I can right. go on and on about the freaking toxicity of the nerd culture that has become what it is now because it's freaking populated the entire world because, I mean, back in the day, back in my day, kids, when being a nerd was actually a bad thing, <laughs> and you would get bullied in school, um, people, you know, it was fun to talk about different opinions and people, but now that there's so many people involved, yeah. I feel like it's reached uh, the bottom portions of our society. <laughs> yeah, and that D- D- DCU Twitter is like the worst place and I, uh, and, I agree, and I and I and I and I'm I, I I was talking to my friend and my brother about it. Like DC is always gonna be my go to super. Like at the end of the day, I was I was thinking about it the other day where I was gonna go see Avengers: Infinity War, and I was like, I'm gonna go wear my Avengers shirt or something. And then I realized, like as as I was going through my closet, I'm like, there's my Batman shirt, there's my Superman shirt, there's my other Batman shirt, there's my other Superman shirt, there's my other Superman shirt, there's my other Batman shirt. My other Batman shirt. And I was like, crap, I love DC like way more. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, some of the movies haven't been up to par, a.k.a. Justice League um, and Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. I sure. almost kind of feel like it would be funny if I just like, just once a week, I just tweet something like super controversial. And then like, just, just we, we just read like one of the, the those motherfuckers like <laughs> going off, man. Like, yeah, that wouldn't I, be too bad, dude. Like, I don't, I don't know. Some of these tweets is funny, man. I feel like it's going to go into a whole society conversation about this so let's, let's read the get right into first. the comments we're starting with lou bloom who's on your side oh and shit. he said i one know of, one of the only <laughs> there, there was like four or five I, I i found that was on your side out of the like 36 comments we got um he says i agree with a lot of what rb rb3 says the stakes are meaningless and this isn't the leftovers come on ace do you really think do you really believe Marvel will do an exploration on grief and how people cope with the unexplainable and how they expect me to buy into the deaths if they can't keep 
Thor one-eyed for one movie. Uh, to answer you, Lou, yes, I do believe they will do that. If CW shows can do that, I'm pretty sure Marvel can deal with how Tony Stark and how everyone left alive deals with that grief. I, I honestly do believe that. I think that's fun and it's very much an exploratory region of a character. And it's also growth for a character, right? Where the next movie, we can see how the Avengers that are left react. That's my opinion. Obviously, it's not RB3s, but it's my opinion. Um, and I've seen, I was catching up on a lot of different TV shows. And there's so many different times. Like one of my favorite all-time shows, and I know you probably haven't seen it, Supernatural. But, no, but it. it's, it's, it's season three, the season three finale for anyone who hasn't seen Supernatural. You know, the main character dies, right? Spoiler alert, but oh, it's been shit. out for like 10, 15 years. Um, <laughs> and obviously he's not going to stay dead. He's the main character of the show. Um, so, but the, the exploration he has coming back in season four and the way his brother reacts is some of the best arcs we get in season four. And it's really complete, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So... Yes, Lou, I do believe that. And that's that's your one positive comment. <laughs> yeah, my one positive comment. E e hey, Lou Bloom, I agree with you, bro. And yeah, you're, you're very right about the Thor. They can even keep Thor's eye going from one movie. The so. Thor's eye, it's always going to be, I agree with that. It's always going to be dumb and roll your eyes every time they do like a practical thing where it's like, the actor doesn't want to wear an eye patch. Let's write it into the script and, and undo what we did in the last, and I was just like, oh. They un they rather undo something they previously wrote into a previous film, than just say, "Hey, Chris, I know it sucks, but suck it up," kind of thing. Yeah, I just hate how the trailers had him with the eye patch too, though. So yeah, yeah, that's very true. But I'm saying like, I, I on a practical level, like an actor doesn't want to wear an eye patch. Is kind of what it is, and he's like, "Let me wear my eyes. Let's write it into the script." Yeah. And it's just, I don't they know. still have to fucking like CGI his eye some kind of way to make it look stupid. Yeah. They can just see Jan eye patch on him or I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> ZP program says I hundred I hundred percent agree with Ace on this one. That being said, RB3's takes was extremely refreshing and I love how he challenged my thoughts on the movie. If anything, it convicted me more on why I love the movie because it forced me to truly understand my own counter arguments. That's a really nice comment. Thank you, ZP. <laughs> That's uh Thank you, yeah. He, thanks, he says thanks, that he ZP. disagrees with you. That you but, uh, took but some insight from it. But he took some insight from yeah. it. So that's that's a nice comment. Uh, Alex G says, I listened to the Collider.com podcast where the guys were crapping all over the movie. Then I listened to Collider Heroes where the sweaties were 100% positive. I needed to hear both sides collide and you guys brought out the balance. Thumbs up. Thank you, Alex G. That's another nice comment. Yeah, yeah. You're picking out the... the, I, know. the, the, the I swear, here. I'm Jesus just going Christ. down the list, guys. This is all the comments you guys had. And with that being said, that's the last comment we're reading. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there was a lot of comics that says, that says our, I, I, RB3's crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed the movie. But it's just because there's a... People, people like the movie. I, I think it's fine. I just think people need to calm down. If someone doesn't like the movie or doesn't appreciate it, you don't. Oh, I do like TV. it. I do like so, it. I made, I made like that it very <laughs> By the way, I saw one dude who was like, he gave it a D plus. That's not true. A six, in a, a, for me, a six is a high score. For yeah. me, a six is a... That's for, personally, nah. I agree with the guy. <laughs> nah, dude. A nah, six is a low score, nah, man. Nah, dude, six is... High. If, if anything... I mean, for Rotten Tomatoes, if you give it a six, that's a positive that's review. That's true. That's very true. So I, I think that's fucking, you know, a six, six and a half. A, I'll even go... I saw it I saw an IMAX 3D, and that experience helped bump it up a little bit. I'd go as far as almost give it a seven, you know, yeah. almost. Um, but to me, a seven is not like a, a C minus. Rating, rating movies is also very... It's always yeah. difficult to do that. Yeah, I mean, plus, I mean, people just throw out tens, nines. Like, I'm not the type of person to just do that. So, I'm like, I, I definitely, I am. <laughs> yeah, and no, I, I, so I feel, I feel like, I feel like the number system. And by the way, to me, if if you see a seven, so most people see seven is in like a letter grade, seventy percent, like a C minus. For me, that's like a strong B, you know, for a movie, for a movie score. Sure. Uh, because if you're like a one or a two, like that's definitely like not watchable. But if you're like if you're in the three to like five range, it's like watchable but not bad for me at least. But like six and seven, that's like I had a good, I had a good time. I so feel I, like I, that's how I, that's how I land on. There's it. I've been Sports. I've been like a, if any of you guys listening, I've been like obsessed with this movie like on a hardcore level. Like I've been like dissecting it in different levels and thinking about it and like like coming up with theories about it. Coming up like I swear I'm nerding out so hard about this movie. But but one of the things that that I keep going back to is 
what are your expectations coming in a movie and what are your previous encounters with what you're seeing on screen is going to be a key indicator into how you ingest the movie, I guess is what I'm saying. So putting that into simple terms, my connection to these characters to the 10th degree is what kind of pulled me into enjoying this film on a gigantic scale. And the more I broke it down, the more I was like, there's other movies that are better. And if you really take all those elements out of the movie, it's an average movie. But me coming into the movie with all these expectations and connections and fulfillments and geek out moments, it's its more like endorphins making me feel happy and making me feel pleased of what I'm seeing on screen as a result of my childhood and as a result of like me feeling this like joy, I guess is what I'm saying. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say is depending who you are, you're going to rate this type of movie very differently than someone else, I guess, I guess is what I'm saying. And that's okay, guys. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> it's a yeah. movie, guys. Let's chill out. Um, uh, Mike Ags 121 says, Hey, Ace, I'm a big Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan myself. Hey, there's one. <laughs> I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, I don't so. even know if Marvel Studios is a fan of Agents oh, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, no, they are not a fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> Just watch the show and you'll know that they're not a fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, yeah, with that being said, guys, let's jump into this episode, which is all about Atlanta. FX's Atlanta, not the city Atlanta. Um, every time I, t- I was telling you, like when I type in Atlanta and they were like, the city? And I'm like, no, the damn show, bro. Like, <laughs> like talking back to Google. Um, so we're talking about Atlanta, but we're also talking about Donald Glover, who um, is in the news somewhat because he has a new Han Solo movie coming out, which a lot of people, including yeah. myself, are calling Lando a Star Wars story. <laughs> because to be fair, like... I think that's that would have the movie. What's up? He's the biggest selling point of the movie. He's the biggest selling point of the movie, but also it would have been a much more interesting take to do a minor character's background than do like the biggest Star Wars character of all time and try to imitate that with Harrison Ford. I mean, to me, that's such a. I can get into that as well. Where it's like, why would they do a Han Solo movie when it's like you're you're never gonna fulfill the footsteps of Harrison Ford, and you're never gonna fully satisfy the mystery of a background of a character, like Han Solo, right? Like, there's not a lot of people who were asking for that. Whereas, like, a Lando background, you'd be like, cool. I mean, he's a cool side character, so I would like to know his background. I don't yeah. know. To me, that would have been a much better idea for a movie. But also... I'm, just, I'm not a fan of the, the Star Wars prequels, like any of them, including Rogue One. I mean, if Rogue One's cool. Rogue One's by far the best out of like, yeah. any prequel they ever made. Um, but even that one is like, all right, it was cool, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. Prequels are tough to do. I, I'm okay with prequels. I just feel like if you're, why do it for the biggest character ever in Star Wars? Well, and they already did with it with the, the, most... the, the the other biggest character, Dark Vader. Sure, but that's, it, it, it's that. different because he's a guy in a mask versus Harrison Ford, superstar. Everyone knows his face. Everyone knows his voice. Everyone knows his personality, his mannerisms. Like you're always gonna fall short. Like no matter what you do, it's Harrison Ford. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's difficult to imitate that without imitating it and still remain true and not... There's a million different things that I hope... Hopefully, they find the balance in this movie. Um, but yeah, uh, Donald Glover has his movie coming out, which is Lando Star Wars Story. And you're right, dude. Like, he's the biggest selling point. Like, everyone's talking about, you know, his new music video, This Is America. Everyone's talking about SNL. Like he's Atlanta the show. Atlanta the yeah. show. Like he's taking over. Like I was telling you before we started recording, on like a, a like a scale where I'm like everything he touches is turning to gold, and it's kind of crazy and cool because I like the guy and I've been following him for years. We're gonna talk about how long we've been following him, but at the same time, it's crazy to see like this guy just freaking take on the world and making stuff that a lot of people are enjoying to the point where it's like. He's not even like if you say what's what's the most what's the biggest movie he's ever done you'd be like uh I don't know <laughs> isn't the Martian it, it, yeah that's that's probably yeah. it but even that it's like he has like a couple lines you see what I'm saying mm-hmm. like it's not even a big movie star or or a guy who was in a cool movie taking over the culture it's it's a guy who who's made a TV show and made some music that's taken over the culture yeah I mean he's been in this business probably. Um, longer than most people. No, have, have, I agree. Uh, yeah, so I I'm just saying. That I think it's funny how, like, if someone who doesn't know Donald Glover, you would say, 
like, oh, what movie has he done? It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's not really movie. It's more like he's just been in, in, ingrained in internet culture and just culture in general. Yeah, yeah. And I think that definitely started out back when he uh, was writing for uh, for 30 Rock mm. back in, uh, you know, back, I think it was like 2002, 2003 or something like that. But if you read, uh, if you read uh, Tiffany, uh, not Tiffany, who, who's the girl who does uh, uh, 30, 30 Rock, the main the main chick. Uh, is it Tina Fey? Tina Fey. Yeah. Tina Fey. If you read her book, she she talks about like um, recruiting like Donald Glover while he was still like 21, living in like his NYU dorm room, um, and he was the youngest writer they had at like NBC at the time or something like that. So and, uh, and he would often write for the character of uh, of, uh, of of Jack Lemmon uh, okay. because they're both I believe they're both from uh, like the the character is from Stone Mountain, um, Aladdin, Aladdin, Georgia, a lot. Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so he would often write like about his character and family, like backstory, like that. So he was a story editor as well. So he was part of the writers' room to begin with on that, um, which led him ultimately to like getting the landing that part on Community, um, that like he became like pretty big off of uh, as well. Um, and I just think that's super fascinating. That at the same time that he, I mean, he grew up doing like comedy troops and stuff like that. Like so, mm-hmm. he was big in like comedy, stand up comedy, improv comedy. And like and, and, and like the New York uh, NYU uh, kind of scene, um, and he even had like his own like web series back way back in the day too. So um, going going from that and then moving on to Community put him I think on like a whole nother uh, stratosphere. Even though Community wasn't that popular and got canceled and brought back a, a, a bunch of times after like you know Chevy uh, Chevy Chase left and all that stuff, he still managed to find his place and 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 his voice in that. He was a writer on that and an actor and even did some a lot of the music when they like wrote songs for some of the episodes he provided a lot of that um but he ultimately left community to do his music career um which also like brought him into a whole nother like realm of fandom as well um which took a while for that to pop off too because a lot of people really didn't like him when he first came out um a lot of people really didn't like his music (laughs) particularly in hip-hop uh he was kind of like laughed out of the building for like a long time uh I mean, understandably so, when you're, like, rapping over, like, Grizzly Bear songs and stuff like that, and uh, rapping about whatever, like, so, uh, his his music, his early music very on, very early on was, like, very much, like, this, like, disgruntled perspective towards, like, black, like, black culture and, like, black people, because, and same thing with his stand-up, too, almost to the point of, like, he, it seemed like he felt rejected throughout his entire life for being like this weird kooky character that he always was sure just you know, being like a nerd or or um you know we, we were talking about the fubu episode of atlanta like just just came on last week but you know he he has a line um and one of his songs uh uh lights turned on from his uh mixtape uh EP, or from his uh from his record at ep and uh and on there he says uh uh, for as bias, fuck Fubu or whatever. So like, he's obviously had a long-standing sure. uh, kind of relationship with like how black culture has like kind of accepted accepted them over the years. Um, but I think his music has grown progressively to show to demonstrate a more um, pro-black perspective over time. Yeah, so, yeah, in a very socially aware kind of way too, right? Especially in the yeah. moment, and especially where we are now, and especially with the most relevant you know music video that he's ever dropped in my opinion with this is america um let's let's start out too before we get too into it what was your first introduction introduction to donald glover uh my first introduction like, as as a rapper no as, was, as anyone um i mean i probably saw community was it like it was it was first time of me like actually recognizing this person as a name was to as a rapper but i used to watch community i just didn't know he was like I didn't know they were the same person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, you know, it wasn't, like, obvious at the time. Like, you didn't see his face in a lot of his videos or whatever. Um, so then, like, or I don't know if he had a lot of videos early on, but, um, like, I, I, I'm a, I am not a rapper. It's probably the first time I, like, heard his, like, music full on and, like, really uh, came to appreciate that. Um, again, it's him rapping over, like, these, like, crazy, like, white people, like, rock songs or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. rapping over those beats, but then making it, you know, uh, making it his own and making it his own kind of rap thing. Um, and it, it was kind of like this satir- sat- uh, satiristic view of, like, rap music in general. Uh, so it really brought, like, this really uh, different angle to, to hip-hop that, that was really strange and weird. So back in, like, 2010, I think I discovered that. So it's probably, like, when I was still in, like, middle school. 
So, uh, yeah. Dude, every uh, time you say that, bro, you're, I'm like freaking 10 years older than you, bro. <laughs> no, it's man. crazy. <laughs> Middle school. Dang. <laughs> I was in college, bro. Yeah. I don't know. My first introduction was Community. I love that show, man. Community was my shit, man. I yeah. love that show. And uh, with uh, Choi and Abed in the morning, like all yeah, that stuff, yeah. and then their secret handshake. Yeah. Like my, my buddies and I were like big fans of the show. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get six seasons in a movie, um, <laughs> like Abed always wanted. Yeah. Um, but it's so funny. So my, my but one of my best friends back in in Phoenix, his name is Josh, and he is like a huge hip hop head. Him and I, like we've known each other since we were like fourteen. Yeah. Um, so we grew up in Phoenix together. Through through high school, through college, through like we did like a, we started a band, we did music, we did choir, we did like we did hip hop stuff. He was a dancer, I was the rapper. I, back in the day when I wanted to be a rapper, you knew that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And and we were hip hop heads, man. Like we loved hip hop to like forever. Like we were obsessed with like music and like I wanted to be like a rapper and a producer. I wanted to be the next Kanye West. That yeah. was like my dream, bro. <laughs> like I swear, like I that was my dream. Uh, and my buddy, he was the one who introduced me. He's like, hey, you know that like, goofy guy from C- Community? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, this is him. And he turned it up in the car. And uh, and he, he introduced me to Childish Gambino. He's like, oh, he goes by Childish Gambino, blah, 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 blah. He explained it to me. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, um, I'm not a rapper. And it was Cool to Sack, too, which also was in 2010. Yeah. That was my first introduction. So it was very much like one of the first songs I ever heard from him. I don't think it was the first, but one of the first was uh, his, his remix slash... Rapping over the All of the Lights mm. beat. Oh, yeah, I did hear that you one. Turn yeah. out the lights and yeah, you, baby. baby. Yeah. Extra man, I want yeah. you all to see this. Yeah. Like that yeah. was uh, was one of the first songs I ever heard from him. It was like and the I, acoustic version yes, of the beat. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Dun, 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 dun. yeah. Um, so that, that was like one of my first introductions to him. And then I became like, I'm telling you, man, I became like a massive. Uh, Childish Gambino fan. Like I followed his music, I followed his mixtapes, I followed when he dropped like singles. Like back when I was like searching the internet and going off different websites for right, like LimeWire and shit, LimeWire yeah, and yeah. stuff, bro. <laughs> like I would download the songs, and it's like I would follow like music websites that pulled out articles. I would follow different like not underground rappers, but like indie rappers. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was one of the people that I followed like religiously to the point where. He was one of the inspirations for my um, my career path, along with Kanye West. Because when Kanye West first popped into the scene, man, Kanye West wasn't the Kanye we know now. Kanye was like polo, pink polo, backpack wearing, yeah. through the wire Kanye. Yeah. You know, he was the backpacker with the bands. Yeah, like we, like Kanye is Kanye was was like. That was like my 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 idea, right? And yeah. that and also with childish, especially childish too, because both of them, but especially childish, where it was like it's, he's a nerd, and I was yeah. like I'm a nerd, and he's a rapper, and yeah. I'm a ra- I can be a I can be that nerd rapper, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that was my idea as far as being like the nerd rapper, yeah. kind of like when Kanye wasn't a nerd, but he was very much like. He's like, I'm just weird. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not he, you felt, know, he, he rapped a lot about being the outsider. Yeah, I'm not the yeah. game. I'm not shooting up joints. I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not this crazy gangster. Right. And I'm not trying to be, I guess is what he was saying. Right. Um, Which is fascinating for somebody like uh, like Donald Glover because he grew up in the streets of like Atlanta and, and, and a lot of the. Uh, uh, a lot of the same places that like we see like the the big gangster rappers like Migos, Twenty One Savage, um, Young Thug coming out of that out of the situations in, in Atlanta. He lived, and of course, Don Glover lived in like Stone Mountain, so he was in a much more privileged position. He used to go to, like white schools and stuff like that, but he still um, his place in Atlanta and and inside of the Atlanta rap game um, kind of uh, he had like a very distinct sound, a very distinct. Um, kind of personality, but it all kind of came back to the influences of like UGK and Outkast and like all of these um, timeless, uh, timeless um, ATL like rappers and stuff uh, for, for for him musically. Um, comedically, he took a lot of influence from like the stuff like SNL or like um, a lot of the 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 broad mainstream comedies. Um, and of course, he always and of course he always rapped about. Um, like nerd shit, like Star Wars and Spider Man. I think somebody on Twitter had a whole thing where they had mentioned how he had, um, because of the internet, he had rapped about Star Wars, um, Spider Man, and um, something else. What else is he in? Um, he's in something else, like a big property, too, if I'm not mistaken. 
Donald uh, Glover's in a big oh movie? oh Lion King Lion King Lion King oh Lion so King. yeah so he rapped and, and and because of the and internet, he's all in, in, in he's all yeah those. he's in all of those yeah, yeah yeah he rapped about three of those because because I know I remember uh, Community did a panel at Comic Con back in like 2013 I want to say 2014 um, a long long time ago and I remember when he was dropped right before he was dropping Camp. Um, someone in the crowd was like, yo, Donald, you're making, I love, I'm a big fan of your music. I'm excited for your new album. You know, it's like, do you have anything for us nerds? And he's like, oh yeah, I have a song called Bonfire. And that's, that's what the line was. I'm, I'm a beast bitch girl, Invader Zim. Yeah, like that's yeah. Invader Zim is like something super like yeah. weird cartoon that no one watches. Yeah. And again, I think that's why a lot of hip hop didn't come to accept him for a long, long it time. It was. And it was yeah. also like one of the reasons why I cling to him so much. Cause yeah. I was that nerd and I was like, oh, he's coming to Comic Con. He's rapping. He's cool. He's got a different flow. He's he's got a very his diction was weird in hip hop because you know about right. diction in right. hip hop right. and his diction was like over pronunciation. Yeah. Like I'm, I can over pronunciate every like he was yeah. very much like. Yeah, he, 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 he had like the white kind of exactly. rap, rap and I didn't want to say it. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll but say you're it. saying it for me. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say he kind of sounded like how white rappers rap. Yeah, where they have like very distinctive diction where it's like mm -hmm. like. I don't want to name like Jeezy yeah. like they they rap like very distinctive flow and I can rap like this because I never stop like yeah. they rap like that Lil very yeah. little Dicky has yeah. that like his diction was like that mm -hmm. but it sounded cooler like he made it his own I guess yeah, is what yeah I'm a little to bit say. swagged out to yeah. it yeah um, again I think that 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 also goes to like the the ATL influence. Um, that he had as well, like the the little swag that he put into like the end of his rhymes, like the little beat switches that he would have like halfway through like his songs, like in his early mixtapes. Yeah. Um. I think that's. I, I mean, yeah. I think that's a big part of why he he kind of built up a cult audience through like a white fan base and like a uh, like a, a more and maybe not white's the right word, but like a non traditional a mixed hip -hop. fan base. Yeah. Mixed, <laughs> he, he even says that he says that in one of his songs, uh, another like, one of his songs, Freaks and Geeks on. On the EP yeah. record, he he says like he uh, he's a, he likes his girls mixed like his audience. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah, he he definitely took a non traditional hip hop kind of. Uh, Is that the same too. song where he's like uh, chilling with the Asian black chick and it's black and yellow? Yeah, yeah, black, black and, and yellow. yellow. <laughs> black and yellow. <laughs> he says he's like, he has a lot of lines also in camp too about Asian girls. A lot of Asian people like Childish Gambino. Too. Yeah. I mean, he was big with the Asian audience as well. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely true. It was a very much a mixed audience. Latinos, blacks, Asians, white. Like, it was it was much more mixed. I love, I know we're, we haven't even gotten to Atlanta yet, but I love yeah. that little throw, throwaway line towards, uh, <laughs> towards um, freaking the... The when they were in school, the Fubu episode. Oh yeah, and and we're not spoiling anything. It's just a throwaway line. But um, when he was, he's like, of course he thinks it's Chinese. This fool's Chinese, and he's like, bro, I'm, I'm Filipino, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's like that's so it rings so true, man. Because yeah. I grew up with Filipinos. Yeah. Like with that friend I was telling you about is like Filipino. Like yeah. Filipinos love hip hop, bro. Yeah. And it's so funny how like. They're like, oh, it's Chinese fool. He's like, no, nah, bro, I'm Filipino. Yeah, he had a funny joke in his uh, in his uh, in his uh, stand-up comedy um, routine where he was talking about like Filipino girls and like yeah. how they're like essentially the black girls of Asian girls or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always called them the Mexicans of of the Asians because <laughs> that's kind of what they are too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's just so funny. He's always had like a. Uh, a kind of connection. I think he just likes Filipino chicks, yeah. honestly. Um, I think early, early on too, but then I think he definitely, uh, you know, he he definitely like grew as a musical artist and as a writer in and of himself, and and uh, a writer and a uh, producer uh, on the on a cinematic level, or I guess on the television level, um, because he kept like develop. You know, he he worked on Atlanta for like a super long time before he like yeah with his brother up. Steven. Shout yeah, out to Steven. Steven shout Garvey. out to Steven. I was thinking about him last night as I was watching Atlanta. Um, he's he gets. He, I mean, he's written most of the episodes yeah. that we've seen so far in season one and two. So shout out to Steven for being the unsung hero of Donald Glover's career. Yeah, and it's funny. You and know, he's a dope rapper too. Oh, he's he. I didn't. I've never heard his raps. Oh yeah, he's, he's dope. Oh, okay, okay, I yeah, check that. But it's interesting he's, he's, though. He's Paperboy. Oh, is he? Spoiler alert. You'll hear the song in the first episode. He's oh, like, paper, paper Boy, Paper, paper boy. boy. Oh, is that oh, really that's his Steven. voice? Oh, that's funny. That's yeah, that's why it comes kind of, if you squint your ears, you can hear Donald in there. You can hear Childish, <laughs> because that's his brother, Steven. Right. What's interesting, when you see uh, uh, the, the show Atlanta make fun of, like, artists, uh, like, when they have the, the, the black Justin Bieber in that one episode... 
uh, or uh, <laughs> we talk about favorites. That's one of my favorites. Oh no, yeah, bro. It's definitely yeah. If not yeah. my favorite, yeah. So it is or or when he has the the Clerk County dude in season two, like and how it's like the whole idea of like the industry plan. That's what he. What's funny about him? He writes those characters. Um, but he definitely lends his own persona to those characters. Mm-hmm. And then, like, a lot of the things that people were saying about Donald Glover early on are the same things that his character will say about these people. Like, uh, I know there was one episode uh, in season two where, where they're all at the, the college or whatever. And then, um, and, uh, and, and... That's another great and, episode. Yeah, that was an amazing episode. Um, and then Ern and, uh, and Lakeith were, like, talking to each other. Darius, and, yeah. Yeah, Darius, yeah. And then they're, they're like, oh, yeah, so that Clerk County dude, totally industry plant, totally. To- <laughs> and it's so funny because early on, that's what a lot of people said about Donald uh, Childish Gambino um, as a rapper. And it, t- to be fair, he kind of put himself out there that way because he, he said he made his rapper name through, like, a, a Wu-Tang... Um, name generator like yeah. he really didn't have and that's a actually lot of, true too yeah that's true if you yeah. type in Donald Glover that's what comes out I forgot mine I tried it one time I completely forgot what it was really <laughs> I think it was Anakin Skywalker no I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's like some random cool person I want to be yeah Thor God of Thunder what <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious so I think so definitely so I think that's that's why he took a lot of uh, you know he took a lot of those uh, kind, kind of self-deprecating like ideas and put them into like the show so absolutely um, it's it's definitely much uh uh, it's 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 partially his journey as a hip-hop artist is kind of what atlanta's about yeah yeah it's and and he even said uh early on when the beginning of season one uh i heard an interview where he's talking about how this show is not um this show is not a hip-hop show it's a show about hip-hop you know um and that's particularly important because uh when atlanta first came out this came in the big wave of like the new wave of hip hop shows just starting to pop off, like non reality shows. Um, you know, of course, that piece of shit show, uh, Empire, um, definitely Ooh, sparked. You, hey, you just called out Empire, bro. Hey, bro People just, love just, Empire. Nah, dude, nobody loves Empire. Let's, let's, keep, <laughs> let's keep it real here, man. Hey, man. Uh, there's, 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 I, I, I started watching Empire like when it first hey, came out. Hey, everybody was watching Empire. But when I, it came I out. fell off. I yeah, came no, off. Nobody, <laughs> and nobody's watching it anymore, exactly. Like, um, yeah. when they were new for, I don't know, there's a viral tweet just killed me. Uh, when, like, I think Fox put out, like, uh, Empire Renewed for Season 5. And a dude quote, or somebody quote tweeted and said, like, yeah, I missed one episode never came back. <laughs> I feel like that's 90% of his audience. Yeah. Because uh, when Empire came out, bro, that was the number one show in America. It was. The number one show in America, yeah. in the world, almost. Like. Because it's a great concept. Yeah, yeah. This that's hip-hop. A, yeah. Hip-hop. Empire. Yeah, yeah. That's and the first dope. season was dope. First season was really cool. It was. Um, after that, it just became... Became That's silly and ridiculous, off. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but so, but 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 because of that, because of the success of Empire, we saw everybody Netflix bankrolled a hip hop show immediately with uh, with um, with uh, 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 the Get Down. The uh, Get, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that show. Yeah, and uh, of course, unfortunately, canceled now. FX did Atlanta. Uh, Stars, Stars was already doing that show with Fifty Cent. That's right. I was gonna uh, say Power. Yeah, they're, Power. That's yeah, what it's called. it already it was already out before, but like it it grew in popularity and became like a, a ultra mega success. Sure. Um, after Empire as well. So like a lot of a lot of uh, what hip hop television has become over the years is thanks and due. Uh, thanks be- in large part because of Empire, um, but this is probably the one show that like lasted it out in terms of like cultural relevance um, the longest. So. I, uh, what do you? Uh, I'm gonna ask you. What do you think that is? Is it quality or is it something more? I think I think for me, I think what it is is the fact that um, it's a real hip hop show about like the hottest spot in hip hop. Of course, Atlanta is like that's right uh, the spot for for rap music at the moment. Um, Migos, Twenty One Savage, like I said, like all of the big rappers, Lil Yachty, um, all of Quality Control, Lil Baby, all comes out of Atlanta, um, and it's is because it, it represents that in a certain type of way to where not only um, Atlanta rappers can identify with it. You know, I remember there was one episode early in season one that used the Kodak Black song in, in the intro 
Um, and Kodak Black went on and tweeted like, oh, I can't believe the best show on, on TV like used my song or whatever, you know, <laughs> or some shit like that. I don't know if it was like that. Kodak doesn't really speak English <laughs> or like sensible English. At least. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it was it's interesting because I think what I think in a large part, the success of this show is due because a it appeals to like the streets and 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 the hood and, and, and the rap community in general. But also it's just weird enough, just surreal enough and just like quirky enough to appeal to like us film us film nerds, us like cinephiles and stuff like that too. So it has it has a very weird and interesting mixture of the cultures. And I think, yo, Donald Glover, salute to him. He's always been a big nerd, a big a big film fan, a big cinephile, and also a pretty successful rapper. So merging those two worlds together um definitely helps is, is what Atlanta is. Yeah. It's emerging yeah. of you're right. It's emerging of cinephiles, actual like tangible art is what people would call it right. mixed with like you know that shit is funny right. for for like you said like the black community and stuff right where right. they're just like yo that shit was funny that shit was wild mm-hmm. um so i appreciate it i guess is what, what yeah it is. it is that merging of two worlds and mm-hmm. you're right atlanta picking let's talk a little bit about we're obviously going to dive into the show a little deeper but let's talk a little bit about the city and what it's become i was thinking about this after watching infinity war because guess what guys infinity war was shot in atlanta all the movie was shot in atlanta (laughs) Uh, Atlanta is becoming kind of like a buddy of mine um just moved out there Mm -hmm. to keep pursuing his career in 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 acting and all that Mm -hmm. like that's crazy like when i heard that when my brother told me that because it's it's my brother's friend and he's also a friend of mine and he's like yeah he moved out to atlanta to keep pursuing acting Mm -hmm. i was like moved out to it you, you see you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. like that to me is like that's crazy because for the past what how many hundreds not hundreds but like uh, that's hundred dec- years last yeah. hundred years yeah. it's been hollywood. hollywood i'm moving to la to become a, a famous person i'm moving yeah. to la to become an actor i'm moving to la to become this i want to be that. in the picture yeah and now it's like a buddy of mine moved to atlanta to become an actor like you don't hear that and like that's unheard of right any other city in the u.s right maybe like you know if it's bollywood or nollywood or, or tokyo or something like that mm-hmm. that's different you know that's anime that's different movies but when right. it comes to american culture in general it's going to be la and it's always going to be la but is it now because atlanta's becoming like a second la yeah uh, almost to the point where it's becoming competitive with la i was watch. i i keep up with people on instagram with uh the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead's all shot in Atlanta, obviously. Yeah, it's shot in uh, Tyler Perry Studios. That's right. Yeah. And 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 now people in, up in The Walking Dead, you see their Instagram story, and they're like, "What up? We up in ATL? What's up?" And it's like just random. And I'm like, "Shit!" Like the whole crew of it, of of The Walking Dead lives in Atlanta. They don't even just like shoot there. They live there now, mm-hmm. and they're like off season, but they're still like. In Atlanta, and it's becoming like a cultural vibe where like they're shooting big movies there. They did a Baby Driver there. They did like a ton of movies there, and they do all the Marvel movies and a bunch of TV shows. And um, it's it's becoming kind of and obviously the music scene is the biggest in the world. I mean, the biggest yeah. in like anywhere else because yeah. of the hip hop scene. Mm-hmm. So Atlanta, what do you think of that as far as like what it's becoming and what it's brewing up to be? Right, I mean, it, can it be competitive with LA eventually? I think because right now, obviously, it isn't, but eventually, I think it, I think it is kind of competitive okay. with LA when it comes to the reason why a lot of businesses and particularly a lot of films like left LA is because like they 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 roll back some like tax cuts mm-hmm. that, that, that California. That's an easy uh, one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like as soon as that started happening. Plus, Atlanta started giving out a lot of tax breaks for for production there. They built Pinewood Studios in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and 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 again, you know, again, not like a great artist, but a big contributor to what um, happened there. Tyler Perry, man, I mean, like his filming and his like participation in like shooting all of his movies in Atlanta um, to begin with um, definitely brought a lot of business to the film production area of Atlanta and, you know, kind of revigorated like the, their like film, their film tax um, stuff and, and stuff like that. So and that's why we see him building uh, a massive studio property there, a massive studio, you know, lot, like a literal lot um, himself. And then we see Pinewood Studios going there. The only Pinewood Studios there was before was London. in London. Yeah. Um, so they moved their second. And it, and it, I think if I'm not mistaken now, I think the Atlanta stage is actually bigger um, then and the, Pinewood the, was the biggest in the world. Pinewood was the biggest in the world. I think the Atlanta stage is, is if not as big, bigger, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So the film production is uh, is growing and expanding more and more as time goes on there. 
Um, and the more and more stuff you see, you see at the end with like the little peach, uh, yeah, Georgia, and even uh, and even shows that are not necessarily sat in Atlanta, like uh, the show uh, Queen Sugar. That I'm personally a big fan of Avery DuVernay does. Um, that's set, I believe that's set in uh, I don't know exactly where it's set, but it, they they shoot it in Atlanta, uh, but it's set in the South, somewhere in the South, but they shoot it in Atlanta essentially. Um, so as you. you the production, the production uh, code does a lot of it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and on the music scene, of course, we see producers like Metro Boomin coming out of uh, Atlanta and, and a lot of other big name producers, Southside um, music producers, um, making like these 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 uh, these beats. And um, really, the producers are really what puts the rappers on these days. You know, hundred um, percent. Yeah, I mean Metro Metro Boomin. You know, he worked with Future, collaborated with Future, another Atlanta artist um, who grew up Atlanta. Uh, I'm sorry, Future was in the same realms of like the the Outcast and like the uh, he was in the same like in the same houses in the same workshops with them. So he he grew up and did his own thing. And then like when he started working with Metro Boomin, and that's really where his career popped off. And then Metro popped off as well. So then through Metro, you see people like Twenty One come up, Twenty One Savage, and 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 all these other artists just grow up and. And not grow up, but like literally blow up and and become big. Um, and Migos, of course, were big since like forever. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been thinking about that too. The other day is like what people don't realize in the hip hop game, because as someone who's like obsessed with it, it, it fifty percent of your success, if not more, is based on your producer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can you can shout out to any rapper with a famous producer behind him. That's how that's how Kanye got his success. You know, Kanye got a success because he put people on the map with his production, with his beats. If you got a dope beat, at the end of the day, even if you're an average rapper, you have a shot. If yeah. you have a really dope beat, like that's Kanye, that's even freaking Macklemore with Ryan Lewis. That beat is fire. Like, say what you want about Macklemore, but yeah. Ryan Lewis makes some dope beats. Well, I think Macklemore is like not a bad rapper. He's fine too, yeah. but but it really is. I still feel like Macklemore got a success because those beats were yeah, like, those beats were fire. shit. Yeah. You heard that and you're like, Dope. So, with that being said, dude, Ludwig Gorenson is his name. Ludwig is 50%, in my opinion, why Childish popped off because those beats were fire. And Ludwig is a master producer who obviously did the music for Black Panther. He studied uh, he studied film composition. Um, he, he actually, yeah, he studied film at the USC Masters program. Really yeah. Enough. Yeah. So, he definitely, uh, he had a lot of film based, like, you know, I'm sure him, I'm sure him and, and 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 Childish Gambino were able to speak the same language in like a lot of those ways. Absolutely, and he's he's part of the reason why Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, popped off because those beats were fire, dude. Like the yeah. the beats and because the internet are dope. The beats yeah. like he's he's made some incredible beats. Heartbeat, heartbeat um, from Cam. Heartbeat is yeah. crazy. Freaking a, that's such a dope. Like that's yeah. part of the reason why that song even popped off in the first place. Yeah. Um, but that is like such a big picture and you're right a lot of them are from Atlanta mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that that's a big thing but Atlanta's popping off man with that came the commencement of this show basically and what FX FX what's his face Donald Glover has like talked about it a lot he's talked about how FX kind of really took a chance on him and let him be kind of 100% creative gave mm-hmm. him a small budget because it was I mean if you rewatch the first three episodes are pretty much like especially the second one i think is what it yeah. is it's just shot in the apartments yeah and you're like this is just shot in the apartment this is so low budget right. and yet everyone's watching it but they, with a small budget and with 100 percent creative freedom to donald and his team because he has a team uh stephen glover his brother and then the director a hero um i can't pronounce his last name unfortunately i think but. his Oh, come on. A Tokyo based filmmaker who came from straight. He does from all of Donald's Hiro Murai. Hiro Murai. Um does he did, a, he did the short film that accompanied because of the internet or mm-hmm. because of the internet. Um that was like twenty four minutes also featured like Chance the Rapper. Um he did a lot of the other videos that, that uh Childish Gambino is responsible for, like his a lot of his bigger um music videos. Yeah, like three thousand five and also a couple others that did he do Bonfire? Um, I don't know. He definitely did the one that was like, you remember that? I don't know what the, which I can't remember exactly what song it was, but the one that like Donald Glover was like in the restaurant and just like walking around and like dancing. Oh, that's a, uh, not Freaks and Geeks. That's uh, um, Don't Be Mad Cause I'm Doing Me Better, better Than, than you, you Doing, doing You. you. What's yeah. the song called? It's called, ah, oh, I forget. Um, um, but yeah, um, because the, because the internet, by the way, probably one of the most influential rap albums to come out in like the past. Like, this album's fire, dude. Yeah. That like, album's fire. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so fire. good. And I think, you know, again, that's the one that kind of put him in the mainstream hip-hop sure. conversation. 
um, as well as gave him like the artsy kind of edge that he was looking sure. for to do initially. Um, and I think that's uh, a pretty big step for him. It got nominated for the Grammy for Best Rap Album mm-hmm. um, when it came out. And a lot of people thought it should have won. Uh, I don't even remember what else was I was going to say what won that year. Um, I know Yeezus was nominated. Um, I can't remember what else like came out in that year in particular. What's your um, uh, what's your favorite song from that from Because the Internet? Uh Oakland. Yeah, Oakland. Uh Oakland. You, is... Oh, you man, you took mine, bro. <laughs> hey, man. That song, that's that another one amazing. where the beat is just like yeah. and it's just like, wow, those drums are crazy. Like yeah. and then uh the chorus is fire. I mean, yeah. I like World Star is great too. I like a lot of weird songs off of some like Flight, Flight of the Navigator, Navigator is like yeah. Probably my second favorite yeah. from that album. Also, the one we were talking about is called um, Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Yeah, um, Sweatpants. But uh, but basically, you're right. That that one is uh, because the internet became very influential. And you're right. Chance the Rapper. Right. Look at what Chance became the last two years, man. Because yeah. I remember when I went to go, when I went to that hip hop festival that I went to, I think I told you yeah, about you it. Yeah, told me, yeah. And when Chance the Rapper came out and like people were losing their minds, dude. It was crazy. And then obviously Kanye came out. But Chance, right, right, 2015, 2016, when he was popping off, part of the reason why was because he had the similar yeah, it's connection. Yeah, kind of edge of, like, oh, I'm a different, different yeah, outsider. I'm a yeah. weird kind of, you know, scrawny-looking, you know, rapper yeah. who has this flow, uh, a weird flow. Because Chance had a weird flow. Like, when he first came out, my buddy introduced me to Chance the Rapper. Yeah, acid Rap. And I was like, Acid Rap was one, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And it was like... I was like, who is this? This guy sounds so weird because he has the yeah. voice cracks and stuff. Right, right. And right. I was like, I don't know if I can handle this for an entire album, but eventually I got kind of into him. Yeah, as soon as he started doing the whole Bible thing, I, I kind of I kind of had enough, you know. Hey man, <laughs> what you got against the Bible, bro? Uh, not against the Bible, but he I don't I can't vibe with somebody who's like always oh, preaching in his fucking records, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Uh coloring book was You mean like Kanye good. West? <laughs> oh, man. All right, we're not talking about Kanye. Old Kanye. I miss the old Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? Kanye, Did you see that random tweet thread? I like how we go off on different tangents, but when when someone said that, they just literally tweeted out I miss the old Kanye and there's like 20 comments that finished the song. Oh, that's funny. That's it's, funny. It's dope. Cuz it's <laughs> it's so funny to see how like all the you see the pictures. Yeah. One of them is like a 16-year-old like white blonde girl. <laughs> and there's like old guys young guys but you see like the twitter profiles and yeah. you see like who they are but uh, they're literally rapping that out after the whole kanye tweet thing and there's been so many happened. good kanye i was gonna kanye make let's make a kanye uh meeting of episode uh, absolutely not <laughs> we, absolutely. we should we kind of nah, should though man. We, i can't support kanye no more though. i'm talking about the old kanye nah, though. man even Come on, nah, man. i just can't anymore man yeah that hey, was man. pretty rough i told Coonery. i was texting you about it coonery Ooh. I can't, I can't su- hey but uh you That's know, there, a harsh there, language, bro. There was there was some uh, there was a great tweet that was like uh, 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 that had like the you know like the the Kermit meme of him like looking into the mirror like the the alter ego. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I can't remember exactly the tweet, but it was something like um, uh, I'm feeling pressured. Uh, so what? what uh, it's, it's it's a lyric from uh, from from uh, from my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. It's like uh-huh. um, I'm feeling pressured. Uh, uh, I'm feeling pressure from the scrutiny. What do I do? Act more stupidly as like the mirror reflection. Of, of, no, that's uh, that's can't tell me nothing. Oh, can't tell me. Is that it? Yeah, oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's just funny though. That's like a perfect meme. Like I think in that guy. song he has a, like a Cosby line too. He has a lot of Cosby lines in that too. Yeah, but he's always had an admiration. For yeah, he me. does. He that. Doesn't hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, back to back to uh, yeah. Ch- Childish Gambino and Donald Glover in Atlanta. Um, reason I mentioned because because the internet um, because I feel like um, a lot of what that album talks about um, is like how internet culture kind of influenced rap music in and of itself and that's something that uh, the show Atlanta pokes fun at oftentimes um, you see uh, in one of the episodes early on with uh, the the another Filipino guy um, coming in with the hat. Um, the the, the Instagram uh, yeah uh, what was his name again I forget dude Instagram <laughs> homie I forgot his name though yeah yeah um, um, that's so early on dude I haven't rewatched season one so that's uh, what yeah, I watched season one like a lot so mm-hmm. like I I'm very um, that that character is funny and it is also hilarious because a lot of people. Um, that's that, I think the, that's that's episode four. Yeah, episode four. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was I can't remember the, the character's name. I forget his name too. Um, yeah, but oh man, he's so funny because it's it's funny because a lot of people think that character represents like a DJ academics, like 
type of like web journalist, <laughs> like the Instagram, you know, kind of thing. Yep. Uh, and that's so, your homie, bro. That's... Hey, man, I like academics. Yeah. Uh, but it's just it's just funny how how he represents that as like this cartoony kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> over the top. Hey, let me follow your Instagram, bro. Like, yeah. like, the super soft dude or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think that's just funny. And, and uh, I think it speaks a lot to like how social media influences um, the rap game. And we even see that in, in a more recent episode in season two. Um, with uh, with Paperboy dating like this Instagram model or whatever, um, and she's very much obsessed with posting pictures with him and you know getting all these likes and comments and how that kind of fuels her flame. Whereas Paperboy's trying to keep it real and just be his own thing. Yeah. Um, and how that contrast has to like match up to some extent, you know. Um, so I think because the internet addresses a lot of those themes of like how um, interwoven our our culture, our 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 memeage. Um, to a certain extent, is with uh, the actual hip hop community. I think that's very evident in the song uh, "World Star" yeah. uh, early on in that album too. How like the World Star, how putting up fights on War Star on World Star is like this big internet thing where the original purpose of World Star was to post hip hop content and music and music videos and stuff like that. But it became more known for fights and like uh, and other you know other other crazy shit. So yeah, yeah, that's that's such an interesting point for sure. Let's dive into season one of Atlanta when season one premiered. Atlanta. Like you said before, it kind of, like when I was recommending it to friends of mine, so when I started watching the show, two buddies of mine from work, we, we would watch it at the same time, mm-hmm. and then we would talk about it afterwards, because, I mean, come on guys, we it's a 20 minute episode, so we can literally watch it at lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would watch it at lunch and just have like a little Atlanta after show, because <laughs> we, we worked in an office where um, two of our co-workers left, so we had an entire like... Um, space for like five or six or eight people mm-hmm. and it was three of us <laughs> so yeah. so we had like a little office to ourselves like our own little separated office yeah, right. so we would watch it and then talk about it afterwards but that's kind of how we we got into it because we would talk about it we would laugh about it um but when i first started watching it as we would recommend it to other people in the office it was so funny how you pitch the show right mm-hmm. it's like how do you pitch it to someone when you recommend it like if you pitch a different episode a different show to someone like a brand new show i say like oh like you should watch game of thrones it's about it's like a mid- medieval fantasy world but it's still very true and still very grounded right it's mm-hmm. very cool it's very game of thrones i mean it's very um um it's very realistic it's kind of like lord of the rings when i pitched atlanta i pitched it as like it's a it's a weird funny quirky like show about like hip hop in Atlanta, which yeah. is kind of like the quick little logline pitch, right? Yeah. But I think a lot of that came from these characters. So Ernest, um, Donald's character is very much true to Donald himself. Yeah. Um, Princeton graduate. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's coming from school. He's coming to he moves back in home. I think yeah. is what he it dropped is. Out of, he dropped out of school. Is like moving back to back home with his parents, but his parents will let him stay there. And then he gets um, the idea to become the manager for his. Um, cousin, cousin, yeah. who's kind of blowing up in the internet kind of culture of hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's not mainstream, obviously, but he's right. blowing up enough to get hits, which is kind of what it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, we meet his cousin, who's like the most like leave me alone type person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I think a lot of, I think that's what's so good. Leave me it, alone. I'm I'm tired. It, I just want to chill. It definitely, <laughs> it definitely gets the different personalities that come out of Atlanta. Because I know a lot of people from Atlanta. I've never been to Atlanta, but like I know a lot of people. And there's definitely like those three archetypes of like the Donald Glover, the Darius, and the and the I haven't Alfred even gone to like, Darius yet, but yeah, I wanted to say yeah. like like Darius, what Darius brought to me was like his first interjection was literally like talking to like Donald's parents to yeah. Ernest's parents and he's like, Hey, how tall is your tree? Hey, you mind if I if I cut your tree down and I take it home? Or he says something yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. so weird that yeah. you're like and the, the dad is like, No, you can't do that. Yeah. But when he's he's responding to it, it's so funny because he says like there's a conversation where they have in the car where they're talking about a converse, like a mm-hmm. certain issue mm-hmm. and he like jumps in with like random shit mm-hmm. like random ass shit mm-hmm. and it's funny because you're like oh this is the crazy guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's playing like the crazy quirky guy yeah. who's just insane yeah and, and they, the best character in the show they, especially they, season they, one they, they definitely they they utilize a lot of and of course the, the son's oh no me, like i'm a Fucking whatever. Um, <laughs> it just they use a lot of like different conventions and like the like those three definitely are like the three different people I could definitely see like representing like Atlanta in some sort of way or fashion, uh, which is just hilarious to me. And and 
Uh, because, like, I definitely have a lot of family from the South, cousins from the South and stuff. And they all are the very slow-talking, like, almost mumbling type of, like, dudes who just, like, just want to sit and, like, drink Chill. a 40 or whatever. Yeah. You know? um, so <laughs> he, he, he definitely gets that across. And he's, like, this drug dealer. And what, so it's, like, the, the contrast between being in the streets and, like, actually... I'm being about that life, and then well, also like just <laughs> trying to survive, and like you know what I, I mean. I just like, want to watch TV and chill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, with a hey, drug dealing, I mean, shit. The way he was doing it, he probably can just sit around and yeah, play. yeah. But but if he was trying to pursue the music thing full time, I think that's definitely where he's he he, he builds a lot of that off of. And you know, the actor who plays uh, uh, Alfred, uh, uh, I think his name is uh, Brian Tyler. Um, I can't remember his last name. Brian Tyler or something. Um, um, it's uh, oops. Brian Tyler Henry. Brian Tyree Tyler. Tyree Henry. Brian Brian Tyree Henry is actually he's fun. It's interesting because I think part of Ern's main backstory, Ern being like a Princeton graduate who dropped out um, and moves back to Atlanta, is is, is in some way reflective of, of Brian Ty, uh, Ty, uh, Tyree's like actual real life. Um, he he did attend like Yale as like a student, and he actually he actually did end up finishing, but like majoring in, in acting and stuff. I mean, came back to uh, came back to like his home and to pursue the acting thing full time. Um, so I, I think it's interesting that he writes in um, the trace of like the rest of his stars, and and it weaves that into you know. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that's and such a good point. Good you're right because you're right. Ernest is playing. I mean, Donald is playing himself in a way. Yeah. Brian is playing himself, and but it's also part of. But it's also Ernest. part of Ern too. Yeah. And, and I it, think, yeah. and it's also uh, uh, Lakeith is playing Lakeith. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, because yeah. we 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 were at a Comic Con when Lakeith yeah. was there. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to the to the Death Note premiere, and you yeah. unfortunately couldn't get I in. That get was in. a shit show, yeah, man. That, that was crazy. Duh, shit show. Yeah, that was like, crazy. Like, you should have seen Inside. Oh really? Inside, it yeah. was crazy. People were like going nuts man because yeah. they're like we don't have seats wait we do have wait who's who's sitting where wait you move back you move here and they moved us like 20 times yeah. no joke like you should have seen like freaking perry and emma they were freaking out yeah, um i tried crazy, to keep it man. i was literally like trying to wait in line for you yeah nothing. i was there before y'all were yeah. that was crazy and they still didn't let me in yeah uh, that's fucking netflix up. yeah netflix was weird <laughs> uh but anyways I, we got to listen to lakeith a little more lakeith is yeah, every time I, when I fr- when I finally got to meet him a little bit, and especially with the Perry interview and when he did when he like sat down with Perry and shit, mm-hmm. like you realize like, oh no, this is Darius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's 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 him just playing himself. He's like a different version of himself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. They they keep true to to. It's very much writing, true to self type of content mm-hmm. type of episodes is what he's writing Mm -hmm. so that's a very that's a very interesting point um the season as a whole started out as a very comedic funny um season there's so many but at the same time what made atlanta such a popular show uh, there's a lot of reasons why it became a popular show but one of the main reasons was because it was so socially content socially conscious of what it was trying to say about quote unquote the culture um, and what it was trying to say about not just the hip the hip hop game and how it's changed and how it's become um, something that's not as exclusive as it was once was. Mm-hmm. It's much more on a different level. I, I don't know. What do you think that the show was trying to say on a socially on a social level, but also on a on a cultural level, especially with with media and entertainment. Well, I think on a, on a social level, uh, you know, uh, kind of different from like the the entertainment level, but it does say like the worth of money to like the the disenfranchised, like the impoverished. You know, there's that whole episode where uh, Ern is like trying to um, pawn his phone off, um, but instead uh, uh, Darius convinces him instead of like pawning the phone for money, he's trading in for a sword, and then like Darius promises like he'll make three times his money back or whatever. Uh, I don't know if you remember that episode. That episode's but... hysterical. Yeah, yeah, I love that episode. <laughs> yeah. he's, going, he's like, no, I can get you more, man. He's yeah, like, yeah. Punch up. He has a sword on the back, the right. samurai sword. Yeah, right, of course, right. I remember that. Um, and it's because like, Darius is my favorite. Like, I can't yeah. lie, he's my favorite character in the show. Oh uh, yeah, he's hilarious, man. He's so I mean, funny, he's so good. And then, uh, but I mean, in in the end, it kind of has a very potent message about like how. Um, how you know people say if, if black people invested in this they'll make so much money if you did this and you invest in that 
Um, but you know, a lot of times for people of color living in these like low income communities, you can't afford to like be putting money and throwing it away and waiting for a year to, to make it back and hope hoping to make it back. You can't afford that kind of gamble. You don't afford you can't afford that kind of luxury. Um, money is is finite, uh, uh, especially for for poor communities like and especially for for poor people as well. So. Uh, is definitely saying like the value of money is weighed more and more. And I think that's a theme that continuously weighs on throughout the series, how money affects and, and, and the value of money, how it kind of, uh, how it, it, it is, it, how the value of money in and of itself is more precious than like what you have to use the money for. Um, in a certain type of way, we see that in, in the episode where, um, where Earn is like literally has like thirty dollars in his bank account, but he's trying to like take his his, his, his girl right. out to dinner. That's a great episode uh, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like he's very much like tight for that, and it's also in the episode where we do end up getting the payoff to that uh, to that to that to that whole joke of like in season two in season two where he he finally does get the money, but he can't spend it all <laughs> because like his fucking uh, cousin or or, or 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 the fucking uh, uh, Tracy yeah. who just got out of jail is like. Like fucking like fucking hoodwink them, you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> it's very much and 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 again, there's more and more examples of how that theme of money and the and the value of money to these poor areas and these sure. poor people and it's uh, also the, a lot more the value of money within the hip hop community too, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's also the concept, especially we get that in in season two with the with the strip club concept where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, because that whole episode's about money and it's yeah. about how like, hey man, don't be cheap, bro. You yeah. in the strip club? Trying to stunt, yeah, yeah, yeah you stunt. Man, you yeah. yeah. So it's like, come on, man, pay pay her, pay her. She's dancing. Yeah. Like that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of thing. The when the announcer is like talking, yeah. to him, it's like, yeah, you, you in the green shirt. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Look, she's dancing for you, man. <laughs> but that's kind of the concept of 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 wealth in in that as well. That's a very interesting point. Um, wh- what about um, entertainment? Let's talk about uh, probably one of, if not my favorite episode in in the show. Um, which is season one, episode uh, episode five. Nobody beats the Beebs is what it's called. <laughs> um, and this episode is definitely, as I said before, one of my favorites. But it's freaking hysterical, and it's never, it never, it steps outside of to be self aware, but at the same time, it stays within its own pocket. If that makes sense, right? They never really like. Uh, wink at the camera too much. Mm-hmm. They always try to keep it serious, but basically the entire episode is about how Alfred, the rapper, is is playing a basketball game for charity, but he's playing it with other artists. And one of the other artists that he's there with is Justin Bieber. But the twist um, <laughs> is that Justin Bieber is this, instead of being a little white kid, skinny little scrappy white kid yeah. who's always getting into trouble, it's a little a scrappy little kid. black kid yeah. who's always getting into trouble. <laughs> and, and they're playing basketball together and Alfred is kind of tired of his antics and of his cockiness. So he decides to play basketball a little harder, even though it's for charity and everyone kind of <laughs> plays it easy. But it's so freaking funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny because it's like, how how much of an asshole Justin Bieber is yeah, yeah. in the episode, and how much he like talks shit like on the court and stuff. Like one of my favorite lines is like, uh, someone in the crowd is like, "I love you, Justin," and he's like, "I know, bitch," or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I forget what he says, but it's so funny. And then he does like the stupidest shit and throughout the entire episode. But the best part is at the end of the episode where he's like, he goes up to the podium and he's making like an apology, yeah. like a press conference, and he's like, "I just want to say." I apologize for my actions. They were inappropriate. Uh-huh. With that being said, I wrote a song about my apology. And it's like, uh-huh. whoa. And he starts like dancing yeah, yeah. and doing like this little Justin Bieber thing. Yeah. I said, I'm sorry, girl. Yeah. And it's like dancing around the stage. Donald Glover actually sang the song. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you could see uh, Ern in the back, Donald Glover. And he's yeah. just like shaking his head like, yeah. what is going on? Well, that was another funny, uh, another funny like uh, B story of, of Ern. Like talking to all the That's different right. managers, to like the managers, yeah. yeah, and like where uh, the one lady thought he was like this manager, like screwed him over, but like they were like super close, and then uh, he and played along, and yeah, he, he played didn't along, and didn't realize that like she was really setting him up to like fuck him over, yeah. Um, but she had no idea who he actually was. She just thought he was like another black dude, yeah. And all black people look the same. That's the joke, guys. Uh, but then, like, but it's still really funny. Yeah, it's just so it's so funny how uh, it's just so funny how that ended up playing out um how that probably ended up screwing earn more than he he did um i love that episode because i think that uh it, it it touches on how a lot of 
uh, the hip hop community, the black community kind of feels about Justin Bieber in general and how um, a lot of people feel like uh, some of his music is like cultural appropriation and some of his antics, um, just the way he like used to affiliate with like all these like gang bangers and all this kind of stuff. Like he, he very much like dove himself deep into like what black culture was like actually uh, what he what he perceived as black culture to be, so he 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 used that as like a marketing thing for him for a long time. Uh, I think this episode provides like kind of a kind of a funny little commentary. How do you feel about that? that? Um, how do I feel about Justin Bieber? Or? Uh, yeah, Justin Bieber's uh, um, appropriation of of what he his antics of what he was doing. Well, I was never mad at. It. I mean, I thought the shit was funny. I love when he was like pissing in buckets and shit like in the back of restaurants. You know, I thought yeah. that was that was like peak Justin Bieber for me. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just interesting that he. He for a while he really surrounded himself with like a lot of black people and like and a lot of his like a lot of you know frankly sorry y'all I'm gonna keep calling y'all out a lot of his white fans like kept getting at him for like oh if, it's not it's not Justin Bieber's fault that he's acting like this it's the people he's hanging around you know like all that type of shit you know what I mean speaking like dog whistle and shit you know yeah. I hear it but um but so that's what that's what a lot of it was um so then uh this episode kind of. Uh, uh, does a reversal of it like oh what if Justin Bieber was black would he still be able to get away with like a lot of things he gets away with um, but then it's you know it goes down to a much deeper rooted thing like people want the good guy and the bad guy you know and 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 what Bieber represents and what Chance the rapper for example represents and what a lot of like more of the pop mainstream you know uh, industry plant people kind of represent are the more positive the good guys the i'm sorry if i you know and you know the apology song uh that he sings is very reminiscent of the um um didn't they say i'm sorry from the justin bieber uh the justin bieber I, i'm sorry oh joke. yeah i'm so, so that's sorry the, yeah, yeah yeah exactly that's the play on that so yeah. like it's very clear that it's just saying, like, it's it's more of the game of the hip-hop or of music in general to pin these two kind of personalities against each other. Um, and I think that even gets further subverted in season two when they introduce the Clark County character. And that guy is so, like, is, is so that nice. Guy's the best. Yeah, he's so nice and so, like, presentable, like, in the real world. But, like, when you see him, like, inside of the studio, yeah. he's, like, passively, aggressively, like, attacking the engineer, like, nonstop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was probably, that to me is my favorite episode of season two. It was just, oh, I was going to say of, of all the episodes? Uh, probably not all. I still say the Invisible Car one. That's the uh, best. Was, was the, That's was the, the best episode. Uh, um, let's jump into, before but, we get into the, I was going to say oh, BAM, perfect. though. BAM. Or are we going to go? That's what I was going to go into. Okay, okay. But this one, I, I think, was like, is this the one with the commercials, too? The commercials, yeah. Holy shit, this episode. So basically, the premise of this episode, guys, and again, we're not really getting into super spoilers, but it's a, it's about um, uh, Al. Al is on a talk show, mm-hmm. and, and this one is probably one of the most... It says a lot about like social commentary yeah. is, is what it's trying to say. Yeah, black culture in uh, general. Yeah. About everything. But it says a lot. Yeah. Um, but basically, they're trying to almost put like a psychology thing on him. <laughs> but it, but it, and then at the same time, it has fake commercials throughout the episode, which I thought were real when I first saw it. I don't yeah. know if you I, I, I literally thought the episode was only like 10 minutes because I kept fast forwarding through. Like, oh, you fast forwarded it? I oh, literally, I the first time I watched it, I. Fast forwarded through like when they were like cut to commercial, I like fast forwarded through uh, on the DVR or whatever, and literally it was like, what is the episode only ten minutes long? And then like I literally had to go online and read like, oh, the commercials are part of the, the thing Those too. Those commercials were uh. so funny. <laughs> I mean, the whole premise of the episode too, because it's it's also Alfred, but it's also this kid. Yeah. Is this the same one, right? Yeah, Correct yeah, me yeah. if I'm wrong. Um, the transracial. Yes. <laughs> where it's this like sixteen year old kid, and it's like. A very proper guy comes out and he's like, hello, my name is blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to tell you the story of this guy named John. Who's And he's like, John is a 16-year-old kid living with his mom and blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. But he has a different story. And he's like, I'm 16 years old, but I identify as a 42-year-old white man. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they would ask him each time for like which job you work at. He'll say something different. Like, yeah. <laughs> that episode is so funny because it's, it's very much a commentary on um, what... What and I I want to I don't want to step on toes, but that's kind of the point of the episode is to step on toes. Is like what is identity now? Like yeah. identity has become something to where it's too much of a flexible kind of thing. Where yeah. where it's so flexible to the point where it's getting ridiculous. Like you can't just go around 
saying and identifying with certain things that aren't real because they're as fake as what you're trying to identify with. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right, and I think that's exactly what they're what they're saying in this. Like, it, it very much speaks to the whole uh, problem that I guess well, I'll say problem that that uh, who's the the Rachel Doss chick who was like the head of like the NAACP branch in like Washington DC. Oh, that's right, yeah. And she uh it was revealed that she was really white the entire time just yeah. playing as black. Uh, I think it was a commentary on that. Like and and when that whole thing popped off, it was a big commentary a lot of conversation was like, can you be transracial? Can you identify as another race? Uh whereas sex and gender or whereas sex is something that you're born with and gender is like the identification of that sex. Can you be born into a race, but then like choose to become another race? Uh, and that's a very sensitive issue that a lot of people have been debating. And this movie kind of this I'm sorry, this show kind of tackles that in like a very uh, comedic type way of like the fake news coverage of, <laughs> of and and I love by the way all of this ripping on BET, all of it, every single little bit of this is like ripping on BET. If you watch BET late enough at like night, you'll get to where they're like where they're making fun of this shit at. Um, and like Centric, Centric One and like all these other like black networks. Um, and it's just so funny how I love, I love how when that whole thing starts, it starts in like the super long clip of like them looking up into the trees and then finally pans down. It's like, it's exactly how these things are edited. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just funny, uh, that, uh, when, when, when they actually had him on the show with the other lady who was there. Um, because the the whole the whole point of the the whole discussion was to pin um, Alfred for saying something about what do you say something about gay people or something like that. Oh yeah yeah and yeah 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 yeah. So they're trying to pin him on 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 uh, you know on being a homophobic, but the whole time he was just like deflecting and 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 and, and justifying his his reasons for that. Um, but then like when the transracial guy comes on, <laughs> then he's just like laughing his, his ass off and everybody can agree like, yeah, this is a little ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's just interesting how uh, I think this show both accepts the LGBTQ like identification movement, um, not just LGBTQ, but like the whole gender um, identification movement in general. Uh, but then also says like, all right, this transracial shit is like taking it too far to a certain extent. So, sure, and it's yeah. also like I love how at the end I forget the exact because I again I haven't rewatched it, but at the end the reporter is like, I forget what she says, but she, uh, she's like, okay, but let's get back to the point. Why do you hate gay people? When she yeah. says that, it's like, oh, why yeah. do you hate them though? Yeah, I the don't guy. Understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's like yeah, or he was he was like. Uh, or uh, or when when him and the lady like finally start. Oh to yeah, agree. they agree. Yeah, and then and then the the dude's like, but but you hate gay people, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, or something like that. Yeah. you know, it's just exactly they're trying to they're trying to, and again, that's a lot a lot of what these shows points are like those talk shows to like pin rappers against like these like famous authors or whatever to try and like pinpoint like their ignorance or whatever. But sure, um, Earn, I'm sorry, Alfred uh, kind of stands up for himself and and and, and does that. Does that well? Um, I think the commercials also speak a big, a big volume to like, uh, sp- big volume. It speaks a lot to like what, uh, <laughs> like a lot of the issues that that are, are are problematic with a lot of these commercials, um, like how they keep advertising this whole Dodge uh, Charger thing. Um, That's the best one, yeah, because <laughs> it keeps going throughout. The yeah. other ones kind of have like a one-off thing. Yeah, uh, the price is on the can, though. Yeah, the price is on the can, though. Yeah. Um, I think it's another. another that's an Arizona iced tea. Yeah, I yeah. think it's another like commentary on the whole money situation. That's true. Right? Like, is this, why is he being upcharged for? <laughs> and I love how um, the guy who scans it agrees with him. Yeah. He's like, "You're right. The price is on the can." <laughs> um, but and yeah, then, but the the Dodge one is the best one because yeah. it has a running theme throughout it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he's he's celebrating like this life of just living in this yeah. uh, amazing car. But then, like when you find out towards the end, he doesn't have a house. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have a family. Yeah. He's literally he doesn't even have pants. Yeah. <laughs> He's he shows up with no pants. Yeah, yeah. he's literally just <laughs> driving his car, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, I think that's another another thing of like what what wealth, how we determine wealth, how we show wealth and demonstrate wealth. But it also um, has the kids' uh, cookie crisps. Yeah, one, yeah, which is which the is most socially on, like, one. Yeah, big on like police brutality. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. yeah. Courtney's like, uh, I forget what it is, but the whole it's a commentary on on the tricks commercial. Where yeah. It's like the tricks rabbit keeps stealing the cereal mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then uh the, the, the someone the uh, they have like the fake tricks rabbit but they they have him like steal the cereal yeah it's and like the kids are like they stole my cereal and the cop just like beats the shit out of him and yeah, stuff it's yeah. super dark but it's actually like super relevant too yeah yeah and, and i it's think commentary on that too i think that's what's 
interesting about Atlanta as the show because a lot of times it brings you the com. I think a lot it's of dark times comedy. It's dark comedy, and I think it, it it definitely plays in the sense of like how uh, these how we laugh at these comedic moments, how they really have like a dark edge to them, you know. Sure. Um, and and how that how like the real world consequences of these like kind of things like kind of end up playing out. Um, and you know, I mean, to me that was most relevant in season two. Uh, but we're gonna get to season two. Um, after season one, but um, that's definitely like where I think uh, I, I definitely think like well, that's where the comedy lies a lot of times. Like here's this, here's this funny thing, but oh, we're also gonna f- uh, like uh, communicate like what's the consequences of that. So yeah, um, so the, the the next one is the, the invisible car one, where it's when they're in, in the, the club, club yeah. and they're they're uh, my favorite character in this episode is Darius. My yeah. love when he when he calls him up and he's like, "Dude, I'm at home," and he's eating cereal and shit, yeah. and he's just chilling. Yeah. But basically, um, the episode is about kind of that club lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also the one where where uh, Donald's trying to get paid, right? From yeah, the guy yeah. Keeps from his Jamaican uh, <laughs> club on there. I love how the, the secret door passage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he just hides and keeps running away from me. He's like, yeah. "Yeah, yeah, man, I got you, bro, I got you." And then he like disappears, and he's yeah. like Batman disappearing. <laughs> um, what was but, he Jamaican or Nigerian? I forget what he was. I think it was Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. either way, it's it's a super funny episode that that has one of the best callbacks that that it ever has, and it's it's played so straight that it's so funny. That's mm-hmm. what makes it funny that it's played so straight. But the fact that I love how it pops up on Instagram, he's like, "Yo, you got the invisible car, though," and he's like yeah. leaning on it yeah, and he's chilling. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, "Yo, this guy's cool, man. He's got yeah. that." Uh, and then eventually, when it when it comes back around, when it like runs people over, <laughs> it's so funny, man. That episode killed me. That right. episode murdered me. But what do you think about this one? Um, I, I think this this is probably my favorite of of the entire series. Yeah. Um, I also love at the end that in order to get their money, like Alfred literally has to like go back to like his. His like hood lifestyle <laughs> and like beat it out of the guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and even at the end, the the club owner is like, is like, uh, damn, he's real. And it's like, call the cops. What are you doing? <laughs> it's just, it's just so many great, great moments in that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that that one, that one by far is is one of my favorites. Uh, Definitely, and again, continuing the theme, um, the one that's like probably the most like socially conscious one is yeah. definitely the June episode team. nine. Yeah, uh, that one. If you want to break it down, the premise of it. Yeah, yeah, it's basically that uh, Ern and, and Van go out to this uh, kind of Van for anyone. Zazi beats Ern's girlfriend, fiance, yeah. girlfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. yeah, girlfriend in the in the episode. or baby mama. I think is the more accurate. Term. Sure. Uh, they go out to uh, this mansion where. These like fancy white people, and or I guess this white dude and his black wife are um, make are, are having this party to celebrate Juneteenth or whatever. Now, for those that are, fam- are unfamiliar, Juneteenth is a is a uh, largely African American c- celebrated holiday um, that focuses around like the emancipation of uh, of 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 the slaves and stuff like that. Um, so like it's always in the middle of June, so we're coming up on it right now. But it's just it's just funny that. Uh, they go out to this thing, and it's really, I think it's really a, a commentary on how much white people are into black people shit, um, especially the guy who, uh, the guy who's hosting this party is this dude who is, who has all this African uh, decor around the place, like when he offers, when he offers Earn a drink, he's literally offering him like Hennessy. Um, by the way, this was the first time we got an Easter egg for uh, Donald Glover's new, or Childish Gambino's new album, Waken My Love. It's oh, framed like perfectly in the background of like that's one of the shots. Right. <laughs> Holy crap! So uh, yeah, it's just it's just it's just it's just crazy. And uh, it's it's also him like telling him like, "Oh, have you not been to Africa? Dude? Yeah, have you I've not been, been like Africa. fifteen times." And again, that's the whole thing of like the wealth and the privilege of like you know white people who go to Africa and like discover our culture versus people who can't people who are from America have been like disenfranchised for their entire lives can't make the the the. The, the the hundreds of, or thousands of dollars in plane tickets and hotels to like stay in Africa or whatever so they're they're just uh they're not able to go and you're not able to experience the culture that was brought from them from the very beginning um and I think that's a fascinating commentary on that and how this dude's fascination for black culture I think they even describe it I think Ern even describes it as like a, a Spike Lee directed uh, eyes wide shut you know, <laughs> it's very much like this culty, weird kind of vibe that they, they have going in this house. So this is this is another like classic episode, I think, of Atlanta. It is it's very socially potent um, throughout of like what it has to say about like this kind of stuff. So, 
it's 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 great absolutely um let's jump into season two uh just because we're running short on time the finale is great too because it it shows how um erin was uh living speaking of more on on money oh right he's living yeah he's living he's living yeah yeah the end of season one reveals a lot about erin but then season two picks up I think an entire year later. Uh, yeah. So, so you told me beforehand, and I agree with you more and more, especially after the recent episodes of Atlanta, that season one is very much a quirky, funny comedy, where season two is much more dramatic. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, even yeah. even would you even say drama? It's yeah. even more, much more of even a drama with comedic elements, um, and that starts out with with the first few episodes literally with the alligator first man opening scene of the first of the, of the second season they call it robin Sh- season yeah that th- that shit was wild yeah yeah um y- y- watch it guys but it, but it's basically like a like a robbery that's going down yeah they um, they they titled the season they didn't want to title it season 2 they wanted to call it robin season because they wanted to that's have what it's this called. Ki- yeah, exactly because they wanted to have this um, theme running throughout of like the robbery that happens in life like just not just from like a, they start this they start the season off with like this completely unrelated robbery that happens in the beginning um but uh the whole theme of the season is like how different aspects of our of our lives are like robbed away from us in, in, in different ways and respect so it's a very subtle theme um that plays throughout the season but that's the overarching like idea that that that's been that drove that, that's pretty groundbreaking for for a for a television show considering yeah. that it's not an anthology show like black mirror mm-hmm. but it but it has a running theme throughout it like you said which mm-hmm. this season is it literally episode robin season mm-hmm. um yeah that opening shot's crazy and obviously the rest of it's pretty funny with, yeah, with uh, yeah. with Ernst. Tracy uh-huh. coming out of jail. Yeah, so there's a new what's character. His face, what's his name again? Tracy. No, but his uh, the 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 uncle, the uncle. Oh oh oh, is that played Cat, by Cat Williams? Cat yeah, Williams. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, and Cat Williams has it. That that to me is like the best. Cat Williams got to win an Emmy for that one, man. He has to win an Emmy for that, man. Like, it's hysterical, that man. That was wow. I mean, like. I never really liked Cat Williams like all that much. I don't think he's like that funny of a comedian. He was like, he was like he was like someone that I never really got introduced to. He was like I, I was much more on the Chappelle. Yeah, train. yeah, yeah. Um, but Cat Williams was very. Cat popular. Williams is funny because he's vulgar, but like beyond the vulgarity, is not much behind his jokes. Yeah. Um, but then like this episode really toned him down and like made a pretty interesting character study of like. This dude, and it's kind of another self-reflexive kind of thing of like how uh, how Cat Weems' character used to be this big deal, how he used to be this um, kind of person who was admired and respected amongst the community, um, but then like ultimately just like was like left to the wayside, um, and that's kind of the way like Cat Weems' career in general was going, like because of like the crimes. That like the real Cat Williams is committed in real life. His comedy career ultimately just kind of. I was gonna say, where's Cat Williams been this whole yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of falls in and out. So and, like this, this, uh, this, this episode kind of brings that up in and in, in a very in a very nice way. Um, it also just brings up how fucking how how the alligator scene in the South really is, dude. Because like, I'm telling you, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. This episode also gave us the Florida Man joke, right? Yes, it did. <laughs> yeah, the Darius the Florida mean, Man. Dude. But that's Watch. a meme, right? Yeah, that's literally yeah. It's it's a real thing. Like people had the, the whole like the floor like the if you if you don't know like in 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 the show they make this whole thing of like Florida Man uh, ate somebody's face or Florida Man did this. That's the actual meme on the internet because of how many crazy stories we just end up seeing coming out of Florida and how all of them were just like Florida Man. It'd be like Florida man, like like Issa goat or whatever. Like it's just so much weird and random shit. And this episode like it kind of reframes that into like an like, actual one person doing all the crazy yeah, it's just stuff. one person being like the one Florida man, and it's like a like almost like a horror type of like, yeah. flashback. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. That's that's very. So it's it, funny that it comes from Darius too. Yeah, yeah. Because that would come from Darius. Yeah. You're like, all right, this is coming from you, man. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Uh, it is definitely. Yeah, I think that's very that's very uh social social consciousness as it well is. kind of shows like yeah this is why uh, there's you know florida has this kind of perception and florida also you know has this uh 
you know this fate this strange like fast like the, the, where there's a strange fascination of like all these stories that come out of like Florida like what's up with Florida you know um, but it kind of makes it its own original like joke and and, and does its thing and it also brings up like the whole alligator problem of like the actual real state of Florida and uh, you know of course Atlanta has alligators too but that that whole theme of like the Florida alligator is uh, coming out towards the end of this episode which but is funny. what's funny too and I know this is something that's silly but it's still funny when the alligator actually comes out and it mm-hmm. comes out to like epic music and yeah. stuff and it's like oh shit alligator's about to tear some shit up and it just goes to sleep yeah. like right in the front lawn and just lies down and it goes to sleep like that it's pretty funny too yeah. that's like a fun way to end the episode and also as he's like running away too yeah um so the next few episodes uh this is the one where episode two starts out with the gift card one that's the one we talked about beforehand yeah. with tracy um also that opening um was pretty funny when he gets robbed oh, in the yeah. car, he's like, i'm so sorry about this man yeah, but can yeah. i pl- <laughs> remember that yeah when yeah. he keeps apologizing that's a pretty funny opening for me yeah again the, the whole robbing the whole robbery theme and and again this is uh this whole season is concerned with like the crimes that like society is placing on the people um you know and we see a lot more of tracy um in this a dude who got out of prison um without like much to much to his name um and he has to compete for the same kind of resources that Ern is competing for like we see in this episode Ern wants to move in with alfred and be more involved um but because of tracy being there like they have to fight for the same kind of scraps you know what i mean yeah. like, you know, not the same of the same people um this episode is great, and I think that um, overall, um, I think that overall, what this show has grown to represent more and more is like the individual characters in this show, because sure. we see a lot of uh, solo time with Earn in this one, um, and in other in later episodes, we see like complete like just like spinoff episodes, spinoff with, just, with like, different characters, different characters, yeah. including one we we got one in season one with Zazie Beetz character. Um, I forget her. What's her name in the, in the episode again? Van. Van. Yeah. We get one in episode five when she's a teacher. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember that, that episode. One. That literally, my my mom uh, was watching Atlanta all the way up until that point, but she was just so disgusted with that episode, with mm-hmm. the teacher episode. Well, which what, what part? Oh, just like how she was like getting the 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 the, the, pee, the pee out okay. of. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to spoil it, but like, yeah. uh, she was like so disgusted by it. She was like, "I'm never watching this show again," and I yeah. like, never ended up watching it. Yeah, yeah after yeah. that one, she missed the ending though. The ending was kind of funny. <laughs> oh no, she she <laughs> with the kid. The, yeah, the kid in the white face. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Um. Uh, yeah, no, that episode. But but she has yeah. a, she has another one too in in season two. But let's talk about the next one, which is the the Clark County. So essentially, Clark County plays the like you said the, yeah. the industry. What is it called? Industry, industry plant. plant. Yeah. Industry plant where he's very much the straight laced, straight edged, uh, like literally straight edge. Yeah. Um, Based on fun. somebody like a Pharrell, like a Pharrell yeah kind of Pharrell. Influence. Pharrell's yeah. dope, man. I love Pharrell. Uh-huh. Um, but but he's also like a crazy guy in in the in the actual like studio yeah. when he's recording songs. Yeah, I love that <laughs> scene, dude, where he's like playing it. He's like, oh, okay, man, but just don't make that mistake again, man. Don't yeah. don't, don't make it again, okay? Yeah. It'll everything will be fine if you don't make mistake again. And he's like freaking out like internally, but he's trying to like not like go too crazy yeah. but he has his two bodyguards who are like thugs yeah yeah and then when he's he, like the engineer the engineer is trying to like he's trying to record some songs but the engineer is like software keep me- crash keep, keep, keeps messing up yeah, and then yeah, yeah, I yeah. love how the two thugs go up to uh, Darius Al and Ern and are like I think you guys should go home and they're like oh cool 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 and they yeah, just yeah. go home um, but basically um, I love that episode because it also gives us uh, the best song in the entire show, which is "Yoo Hoo, Yoo Hoo, Do Do, Yoo Hoo, Do Do, Yoo Hoo." I met with a bitch in the late night. I don't know what he says, but yeah, yeah. it's so fucking catchy. Yeah. And then uh, what's his face? Darius is. Um, I think Darius is like, "Oh, yo, Clark County, man." And he's like, "Yo, this shit is dope, man. This shit's ca- catchy." Mm-hmm. And then Ern's like, "Man, this shit sucks, but whatever." But mm-hmm. it's still like that, very much like brand friendly selling chocolate yeah. milk. Uh, right, right. literally selling chocolate milk called Yoohoo Chocolate Milk. Yeah. Um, and he has like a little jingle that goes with it. Right. And it's also like Little Yachty selling Sprite too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what I think they're... Little they're Yachty! Yeah. <laughs> I think that's exactly what they were like poking fun at. It was like how a little... Uh, and to be fair, you know, uh, when I saw that little Yachty Sprite commercial the first time, I freaked out. I was when like, I saw, Yo. No, when I saw him in the Target commercial, I was like, The Yo, Target the commercial. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, I was like, Damn. Does, really isn't Metro booming in a, like a Navy commercial? 
was in Navy, old Navy commercial. Old dude. Navy like, commercial. Yeah, yeah, oh dude, my that shit God. is hilarious. Or it's Gap or one of them. Uh, it's either Gap or Old Navy. Um, SZA's in that commercial too. SZA really is in that commercial. Yeah, yeah. I love SZA, man. SZA's yeah. my girl. I've been talking about her forever, man. On this episode, I mean, on this show too. Like yeah. I've been talking about SZA. SZA's amazing. Um, I know she, they got that whole TDE like tour that's happening. She's also in. Isn't she in? I swear that was her in the This Is America music video for Donald Don, Childish Gambino. Which one? She in This Is America. Oh, uh, she was in that. She's like in the. If you see her on the side, maybe I'm mistaking her, but I'm pretty damn sure that was her. I'll uh, show you later. Okay. But uh, that that's a very potent music video too. It it is. Yeah. We'll talk about that. I, I kind of want to finish with that. Oh, Do you okay. think that's cool? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we're literally yeah. just spitballing this, guys, but yeah. I kind of want to finish with episodes. that. Um, but I love the intro of this freaking episode with the freaking mom, the white mom with the blonde lady who's like, oh, yeah. I just heard a song <laughs> from my son's music. It's by this rapper named Paperboy, and I'm going to read the lyrics for you guys. It's so offensive, so I'm so sorry. I apologize for the vulgar content. Mm-hmm. And she's like reading the lyrics, and she's my favorite line, which I said on this episode before for is the uh sometimes you gotta slap a trick shout out colin kaepernick and she's like freaking <laughs> out and she's like her lips are shaking <laughs> but it's and it's like this is what the song said guys but it's also making fun of the vince staples <laughs> yeah yeah viral vince staples, video exactly. yeah, yeah which is literally that mom. exact same thing yeah yeah um where, where uh, she's reading the lyrics of uh what's that uh, song north 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 yeah yeah i love that song it's too song, yeah and uh that's it's also I playing fun had nothing but the, I don't run from nothing but the police. <laughs> it's literally the lady. Um, yeah, the, and that, it's like literally it looks like the lady from that. Yeah, from that yeah. real like viral video that went around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that also plays commentary on it. Yeah, too. as the real life, how, how like the real life, you know, the making fun of like the real life uh, hip hop scene and how that kind of ended up blowing up. Yeah, because Darius into Dar- a new, yeah, because new because Darius says that he's like, man, that white lady's the best thing that happened in my career. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I love the scene after when like they're they're sitting at the bar and then like the the bartender is like, "Hey, free shots, paper boy. Uh, also some free wings, man. Also put me on, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. put me on, put me on, man, put me on." <laughs> like, yeah. It's just so funny. And uh, I love how Ern keeps trying to jump in and he's like, "Who are you? Yeah. Shut up, man. I'm talking to paper boy." And he's like freaking out on Ern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The, the next episode is when he goes to um this is the one I was talking about but that's more it's a much more Zazi Beats episode. Yeah, this one's heartbreaking, man. man. This one it starts to get a, a little more dramatic with this episode. Obviously it has some funny moments. What one of my funniest moments is was, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but this one is um so Zazi Beats for anyone who doesn't know is is half German as well. Um so so they go to like this German like German like festival. I, I forget cuz German has it's a it's a very interesting culture. I was going to say weird, but it's a weird culture, but it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, Very, but it's, but it's it's yeah. a it's a fun little juxtaposition to to play within the cultures of. Zazie Beats is very much African American, but she's also part German, but like literally half German. So she speaks fluent German and she mm-hmm. identifies with that. Um, so she's celebrating her German side, while at the same time bringing Ern along, and Ern is just a fish out of water, yeah, like to so the tenth degree. Um, but this one is uh, this one. It, gets very intense at the end but it still has like a funny moment where where they're playing ping pong and he's like he's like man i i swear i can just tell you these things when we're alone and then the camera pans and it's a guy in a weird baby mask yeah. i don't know if you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. that moment just made me laugh so hard oh man did we already pass the episode this the, the last episode before this one was the one with uh when he when Ern was racing uh michael vick at, uh, oh club. no this is afterwards oh that's after i think it is yeah Oh no, that's the strip club episode. Yeah, right? yeah. So I think that's the. Oh, movie, you're right. Man. You're right. You're right. That's the one that opens with the uh, with the white lady and then closes with uh, the actual thing of Michael Vick. Which, by the way, Michael Vick is actually went on record and said he's willing to do that, like in real life with people, like to just race people in the in the fucking parking lot. <laughs> that's so funny. Club. It uh, was just literally like that's why this show's great because it's <laughs> so random. Yeah. And he's like, "Yo, Michael Vick's racing people." Yeah. <laughs> and you don't even question it. You're like, "All right, I'm gonna race him." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like that's your first reaction of yeah. Michael Vick, and it's actually Michael Vick too. Yeah, it's not even an actor playing him. Yeah, that's e- that's even better, man. Um, yeah, that scene. So I mean, there's a lot of funny moments. We don't want to spoil all of them, I guess. Um, I guess the main one we should probably talk about the barbershop one is funny too. That's another one that comes after the Zazie Beast more focused episode. Sure. Um, um, the last thing on this German one is it's very much an identity thing with with identifying. Yeah. yeah. Even in, in the description of the episode, it says Afro German, which is an interesting way to to say those two combinations. 
um, but it but it's also Earn kind of getting uh, trying to struggle with relationships within the hip hop culture, which is also something that's very relevant within the hip hop culture. Is yeah, is like, like misogynistic. Exactly, kind of, you yeah. can't really be with one girl because it's like, well, yeah. I can't be with one girl because now that I'm famous and I'm hip hop, you know, I got to be with a lot of girls, yeah. kind of thing. And that's kind of what gets to his head, which is heartbreaking at the end of the episode. Yeah, the barbershop episode is just ridiculous. It's funny, man. man. That's it's hilarious. just too much. That's I was like, yeah, all right. Oh, man. <laughs> I no. think I would shoot this guy. <laughs> I get annoyed so easily. Well, see, here, here's what it is. For me, like, and, and people don't understand this, but the, the, the barber for the black community is like the pinnacle of the gatekeeper of, of the culture. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't have your one barber that you always go to, you're never going to like... And it, it says as much at the end when he like tries to switch barbers and he's like, hey, uh, what, what do you want cut, man? And he's like, I actually want to, uh, well, uh, actually, I don't know. Like, he just doesn't know. But your barber, <laughs> your barber automatically knows. You have a connection with your barber as to who and what, like, what you're going to cut, how you want it, how, how, how much you like it, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's a very powerful connection. I have a barber who's kind of shitty. Uh, who's almost sim- uh, almost like completely similar to like this guy, where like he'll literally like t- he'll literally have to go. I literally have to go to his house to like get it cut. He'll show up like hours late, um, and just like leave in the middle of the haircut sometimes. Like so, I definitely know the the plight that he goes through. That's very true to like a, a lot. It's of- it's pretty funny and it's also pretty insane too. The next one is someone that's that's very popular because it's the Teddy Perkins episode. Is the highest rated episode on IMDb. It is, uh, and, it, and it's it's so so basically. It's a Darius spinoff episode. So Darius is Lakeith's uh, character, and it's it's him wanting to buy a piano off this crazy weird rich person. But then he discovers that the crazy weird rich it's it's such a weird episode. Um, it, the crazy weird rich person is actually once was a famous musician. Yeah, like um, a Michael Jackson, like a like, Stevie Wonder yeah, type yeah. type Michael Jackson type. Um, but he like bleached his skin in the same way as like Michael Jackson. Exactly. Yeah. So it comes out, and it's and it's actually played by Donald Glover. So the episode is very much like a, a weird, dark comedy slash horror. Yeah, I think it's more horror. It's bro. a horror episode, yeah. and it's 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 a horror episode all around the most ridiculous character in the show. Yeah, yeah. which makes it even better. Yeah. Um, but what do you think about this one? For um, this one's hilarious. This one's probably one of my top like top ones. Uh, it was not really funny. I didn't get it when I first saw it. Well, I did get it, but like I was like, "Damn, this is, this is like really." I don't know what the point. Of, well, like, what are you trying to say here? You know. Um, but then, like, I it definitely is a gigantic commentary. And again, I mentioned the Jacksons because uh, it very much features that whole element of abuse too. Like how that's a good famous point. kid act or kid uh, performers. Um, are like constantly, constantly, constantly abused by their parents to like become better, be better, do better, uh, and that's the case for uh, Teddy Teddy's character in and of himself, and with his brother Benny, um, who we discover uh, has his own kind of thing and his own kind of place in the story. So again, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, it definitely it's a it's a very strong commentary on fame while also being like this very uh, uh, this very like spooky kind of. Um, di- like anti digestible <laughs> version of like the Atlanta formula, you know, um, where you're feeling constantly uncomfortable uh, throughout this entire thing. Um, so, it, but it, again, it's a commentary on on uh, fame, on abuse, parental abuse, child stars, and all that kind of stuff. We see like some flashback footage of like when uh, when there was a younger Benny who was like the bigger artists have like the two brothers and again that's why it makes the the michael jackson comparison um because it's the uh how uh the jackson the jackson five crew were like really like getting beat by like uh by joe jackson the father you know what i mean and he was like really laying into him and that's the same way we see the benny character in this in this show um who was like the standout star of like those kids they don't a lot of stuff happens off screen they just kind of tell you about it but they show some footage of like a flashback of like when Benny was a kid like getting beat up by his father and then Teddy just watching that and like indulging that and just becoming more and more like psychotic uh as he like looms on like the the this past that he that he once had with his relationship with his with his family so it's just a very fascinating character study of like fame and stuff like that but also still kind of being a little funny in, in, in its own self yeah and it's um, oddity i guess yes yeah, oddity i didn't i think a lot of people found comedy in it i didn't find comedy in it initially because uh donald Glover actually plays this like white face kind of character um i didn't realize that initially um, yeah i told you about it later. yeah you told me about it and i like i said like on this podcast before i literally 
didn't know until like the next week after that that was like <laughs> the real Donald Glover. Um, but then it, it was just funny how they played that. So yeah, yeah. Um, so oh yeah, the Drake Champagne episode is great. And again, another it's all about Instagram. And the Instagram, yeah, taking taking photos for the gram. Um, I um, uh, fun fact, I did the the Spanish version of. Of uh, call me on my cell phone song. Uh, you, yeah, that you, was that me. Was you really? That was oh, okay. I did the Mexican. No, I'm playing. <laughs> hey, that's funny though. The, the Mexican grandpa that was staying in the Drake's house yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that and and uh, by the way, uh, I love the fact <laughs> that Hotline Bling Spanish remix by Fuego. Fuego. <laughs> I'm part of Fuego, Fuego guys. Fuego, bro. That's how it is. That's me. Um, yeah. This is a very interesting look at not only the the Instagram life, how we cling to Instagram. Uh, to like you know for for cloud or whatever going to Drake's house and stuff, but it also speaks, just to get a picture. Yeah, just to get a picture. Um, it it really is so damn. It's so true, man. Like everything is based on if I can just get one picture with this celebrity, I swear, mm-hmm. like that's it. That's what I can do. Especially living in L.A., that's like a big thing too. Right. Yeah, right, it's crazy. Right. right. Um, so it's just it's, it's it's big on that, but it uh it, it says a lot. I mean, it, it, I, I know this episode. Kind of was a little controversial among like Black Twitter um, in terms of its representation of Black women in this episode. How there's that one character that follows around. Oh um, yeah, the white the white girlfriend. Yeah, and of, really, of I didn't know it was star. controversial. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of Black women felt pretty offended by like the way they portrayed um, the one uh, the one the one character who was like following them. The, sure. Well, what basically happens in the show is um, Van and her friends all. Um, go to Drake's house, and then uh, each of the friends go on like their own separate like adventure. So Van goes off just like walking through Drake's house, and then um, one of her friends follows around this white woman who is married to a black actor. So we just follow. So she's literally just following her around the entire episode, and, to- and towards the end of the episode, um, she starts yelling at the white woman about like <laughs> about like why like this this story is oh it's like it's it's a, it's a played out story. Like I don't want to see you know white women with with black men and all that stuff. And then the white woman responds like, "Oh well, what if I'm just a good woman? And like yeah. I've been with him for for like eight years before he was famous, and I was like taking care of him before like he could, you know, do that. And then towards the end of her rant, she's like, "Well, I don't have eight years to to blow on somebody or so. Or like black girls can't afford to like waste eight years or some shit or something like that. Uh, so it became a very like interesting conversation on on, on Twitter for a lot of people." Who felt like you know in many ways uh, Donald Glover was like villainizing um, the uh, uh, white women how they how they feel, and I think that's interesting considering how we talked about before um, how early on in Donald Glover's like mu- music discography he was very disgruntled towards like black women and towards well towards black culture in general but particularly towards black women he would rap a lot about like not being with black girls you know. Um, and he's married to a white woman as well. Um, a lot of people also. Uh, cr- dude, dude, you're breaking news for me. I didn't even know that. Who yeah, or I don't know if he's married. I don't know if he's married, but he's definitely in a relationship with a, with a white woman, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know exactly who. Uh, a lot of people also say that, you know. Is the, that like a thing within the African American community? Because I know Jordan Peele is too. Yeah. Uh, the actor who plays Luke Cage, Mike Coulter, is too. Mm-hmm. Like, is that like. Well, no, it's not. It's not the fact that. Um, it's not the fact that he is. Uh, it's not the fact that black men date outside of the race. It's the fact that it is uh, the fact that black men disrespect the black women um, in, in a lot of senses. I know that was that was a big conversation piece actually this weekend really with uh, with uh, who uh, Mimbaku who uh, Winston Duke Winston Duke Winston Duke right. is actually married to an Asian woman in That's real life. Right, and there was uh, a lot of there was there were some. Twitter, not high profile Twitter accounts that are trying to drag him. Like, oh, how can, how can, you know, how can all you black women like him if he's like dating, a, if he's married to an Asian woman or whatever? Um, and a lot of like black women responded, like, we could still like somebody who's not dating, um, who's not with a black woman, but they, as long as they're not disrespectful to the uh, African American woman culture or African American women in general. And that's where uh, a lot of people come into hot water where, um, where, 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 particularly with with this, with this, with Donald Glover being um, having a history of of rapping not necessarily positive things about black women, um, with having stand up bits that are not necessarily positive towards black women, a little bit disrespectful, as uh, as read as disrespectful, coupled with the fact that this episode is actually directed by a, a white woman as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different aspects that like that go into um, why that's a little controversial for a lot of people. I mean, I just think it's worth noting. Um, 
That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, but I definitely don't think our date dating outside black men dating outside of the race is not a problem for a lot of black women in general. But the problem is when you start disrespecting black women as a result. And I think that's the main case here um, with uh, with with why people were a little concerned about this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, it's interesting, too, because ever since ever ever since after Atlanta became big and after because of the Internet, um, Donald Glover's position on black culture has shifted uh, quite a bit, uh, significantly, where I think he's starting to um, put out more pro-black shit just in his content. I mean, Awaken My Love is a throwback to, like, the Luther Vandrosses, the Marvin Gaye's, those, like, political R&B uh, kind of sounds that are coming out in the 60s and the 70s and the heat of the Vietnam War, um, particularly, like, the Marvin Gaye um, as well. Um, with you know what's going on, he takes a lot of that like musical. Um, he takes a lot of that that musical kind of fire from that again, like with the Luther Vandross, the oldest Reddings of of the world. He takes a lot of that influence and makes it and updates it into a new digital age, while also um, having a lot of songs that are you know talking about relevant black issues on that album. You know, the Boogeyman, uh, Terrified, and and Baby Boy are all songs that. Um, relate to some way or another to um, um, the plight of like black men in general. So um, he definitely has shown a different direction towards his choices and the way he represents um, the culture. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's, I, I think it's just a significant point to bring up. So yeah, about I, about this episode at least. It's it's interesting because I, I obviously I'm not a part of that, but it, it's it's so interesting to see how different communities respond to different issues and different things. Yeah. Um, uh, let's finish up with with the last few episodes, but at the same time, I kind of want to wrap it up a little quick because I don't want to go too long. Yeah, um, um, I think it's you know uh, the one episode I think I would love to talk about. Yeah, I was going to say it, do, if you want to pick one of the last few, it's definitely to talk about. the one uh, with uh, with the mother situation. Okay, um, that to me is probably it's called Woods. Woods, Woods, and that to me is probably one of the most powerful episodes um, ever in Atlanta. Um, it's ever done. Uh, just probably in, in television in general because this episode is so. Um, powerful in its symbolism about um, the relationship between mother and son and how grieving with the loss of a mother is very important and, 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 and how you choose to deal with that grief is, uh, is, is very viable in, in its own kind of way. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, you know, it's based, not based, but, you know, uh, uh, a lot of the, the, the main star of this episode, Brian um, Tyree Henry, he lost his mother um, quite some time ago. I think it was like about a year ago. Uh, so this episode was like uh, almost like a, 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 a reflection of like that grieving process through the character of Paperboy. Again, it's another example of like the writers kind of blending the lines between like reality and fiction and, 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 and mixing those two together to make something really personal and honest. And uh, this show kind of this episode in particular kind of really highlights that just throughout like highlighting how the grieving process kind of affects us in, in, in our own type of ways. Um, so. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that. I've, you know, I've experienced some loss early, you know, in the past, re- in the recent weeks. So like, you, and you know that too. So it's, it's very, it's a very relevant episode for me as well. So it's very, very powerful in the sense that it does communicate what, how grief, how we perceive grief and how we cope with, with those circumstances. But at the same time, how, um, how, how our connection to like our mothers and our parents and our, our grandparents in general just mean so much to a lot of people. So it does, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Thank you, man, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, the one I want to talk about is North of the Border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I feel like it's funny as and ridiculous as this episode is. It's basically about um, <laughs> how they go to perform to a, a predominantly black like university, university and yeah. college, well, or at least yeah, at maybe least, not at black, least concert. Yeah, maybe not predominantly black con- uh, university, but definitely a university that. Uh, you know, it's probably like a lot of black people going to the hip hop show there, but yeah, um, it's definitely somewhere set in the south, of course. And we sure. see um, later in the episode, <laughs> yeah, one of the major frat houses that just so happen to live on that campus. So, so essentially, it, it's it's funny because it's it, I I think it's commentary in general on different types of aspects, whether it's positive or negative is is another thing. But mm. um, it is very much that fraternity kind of weird lifestyle. But basically, mm. shit goes <laughs> down at a, at a at a concert and, and Alfred is desperate for, for weed 
um, for a joint, and he and he happens to find it at a predominantly white fraternity, <laughs> as they're currently hazing okay, their the newcomers, pledges, yeah. the pledgers, I guess is what they as call somebody them. Somebody who just pledged. For I was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely. didn't do that. I didn't like that. But basically, no. like the the t- notorious for, for anyone who doesn't know, like the pledgers do some crazy shit. Like they've made movies about it too. Like yeah. it's it's notoriously crazy that the type of shit they do. Well, hazing hazing, hazing. In California is outlawed. Yeah, hazing mistaken. California. California, but for other places they go hard yeah. and they've made like movies about how hard they get yeah. um, but essentially it's this white fraternity who's currently hazing their their guys and they're like running around naked and shit yeah. and, but but at the same time what I think is funny is how they try to relate because it's the whole concept of like the white people loving hip hop and loving yeah, it. I was yeah. like yo I love your music man yeah. like regardless of their political affiliations their political beliefs they're anti this, anti that. They still love it. Oh, your shit, bro. Your shit's yeah, dope, though. I love that hip hop. Well, it's, it's Isn't not. That, it's that. It's that kind of juxtaposition, though. Well, it's not even like just a uh, all predominantly white fraternity. No, it's, it's literally a Confederate flag. Confederate flag, yeah. <laughs> like, like pro guns, like pro NRA, like, like, gun ro- like, like oh, yeah. super, like super gun far room. right, super yeah. far right. Yeah, and yet. As far right as you can go, and, and they yet, still uh, yo, about, that hip hop is dope, yeah, man. Yo, yo, UGK, man. Yeah, I, I love that snap, snap music. No, that scene like, is yeah. the best scene. <laughs> it, almost all of Atlanta is like, "All right, guys, get up, get up, get up! Yeah. It's time to shake that Laffy Taffy." Yeah, shake that. and they're like, Laffy Taffy. "Oh my god, yeah. that's you don't think that that's scene? Hilarious. No, that's that scene that killed me. freaked me out. I was <laughs> like, yo, this shit's wild.' <laughs> um, but essentially, it, it is a commentary on that, and it's a commentary on how." It's crazy how far, as far right as these guys are, it's like a far right fraternity. And yet they're still trying to relate with, with weed and with hip hop. They mm-hmm. relate to it. And with Darius' case, it's and, guns. It's guns. And Tracy as well. And Tracy as And guns. I think and, that's, and, and, that's really what it's saying is like a lot of times, well, even though we fall opposite on the sides of the political spectrum, we're all ultimately the same, the same people. You know what I mean? And not only that, it's also saying like, you know, the Southern relationship between people, even though these guys are literally Confederates who are like probably the super most white supremacist guys in the world, they still like rap and, 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 and weed the same way that black people still like guns, even though black people are supposed to be like the democratic, you know, the you know, live on that side of the fence. But at the end of the day, it's less about politics, it's more about where you're from and where you're, where you're housed in and, and stuff like that. And all these guys just kind of, you know, fucks with the same stuff. So <laughs> Everything you, I was going to say, you said. Yeah, yeah. It's literally what it is. Because really, that, that whole scene with the guns thing, I was like, yeah, at the end of the day, man, black people like guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and white people like guns. Yeah. So at the end of the day, he's like, yo, shit, you got that dope gun? Yeah, man, check it out. And yeah. it's like it's like the same thing. At the yeah. end of the day, they still relate on that concept. And obviously, it's different spectrums yeah. of, of the field. But at the same time, it's so funny how... As div- as divided as they are, they still like end up talking about the same mm-hmm. shit. And even though it's super awkward, because when they're talking, it's super awkward. Mm-hmm. But it's still a very relevant episode on that hand. Yeah. Um, obviously, the episode ends in a very dark place, and then the next episode is v- very much. I, I would say it's yeah. a much much more dramatic, much more darker episode oh, as well. The, the Fubu one, the Fubu one, yeah, where it's funny. like a flashback episode. Yeah, that one's very funny in the sense that it very much reflects like the the black high schools and like how how the roasting culture there is like super <sighs> intense. Like, it is, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like 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 the, this going back to school, man. I hated school, and it, uh-huh. it, it's. It's so funny how like it reminded me of like I love the scene where the girl passed the notes and he's like, "Do you like Erica? Yes or no?" Yeah, and it's yeah. like the most like simple shit. But I totally remember that shit back in school, yeah. where I was where 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 liking, especially like middle school type yeah. times where yeah. you're like liking girls. You were like, "Yo, I like that girl," and you're like ten. Yeah, it's like it doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very much like a, a reflection on that. And also, you're right, the roasting culture of of those mm-hmm. schools as mm-hmm. well. Is, is, but at the same time, it, it has a very much dramatic moment, and dramatic ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it's the it, and again, it just keeps playing with the whole idea of like the uh, the comedy feet and then and then going into the consequences of that. So um, yeah, very potent and stuff. And then of course, the season finale is next week. I'm super excited for it. I don't know how they're going to end the season. There's a yeah. lot of threads that they kind of left open uh, i'm curious uh-huh. how they're gonna end it because they, yeah. they got a lot to live up to um for our thoughts on the season finale follow us on twitter i'm yes. at squad leader ace at rb3 schmoes uh with that we're gonna close up guys but um i want to hear your thoughts on the this is america yes. song and music video first yeah. of rb3 uh because because i saw this over the weekend and it was i thought it was fire i thought it was dope yeah. uh what do you think on this 
Um, this is probably one of the most... Both, the song and the music video. Well, you know, like I said, uh, Donald Glover has definitely adopted a more pro-black stance and like a lot of his stuff. Uh, and again, it's it's a very wide change. I remember when he did an uh, interview with Charlemagne back in like 2013, and uh, he would say things like he was looking to be like white people rich and stuff like that, you know? So he very... Back in the day, he very much had like a wider kind of like, uh, I guess not viewpoint, but like more of, that was more of his perspective. Now he's looking at things from like the black angle and making art and entertainment from that. Um, so this, this, this song, the song for one, it opens with like this kind of like Afro Caribbean kind of like, um, happy kind of, you know, um, African influence type of, type of, type of song. Um, but then it, it immediately pops off with the gunshot and like how this is America for a lot of black people, like the, 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 the uh, carrying the pistols, um, staying banging, you know, surviving on your own is, is that for people and how, uh, and how the conflation of gun violence among, um, black, black men and women, or mostly black men, um, is conflated with the same kind of conflicts of like mass shootings and and uh, and horrible tragedies of of uh, like gun violence throughout the country. Um, we see that from the very beginning when he's wearing he's he's evoking he's wearing just pants and and with no shirt. Um, immediately, kind of evoking the uh, kind of uh, flipped around look of like the 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 guy who just shot up the Waffle House recently, um, with who famously who I guess not famously but like came in and killed four people and like without wearing pants, just a shirt, just a basic fucking white guy. But it's like it's a flip on that, you know. Instead of like no, sh- instead of like no pants and being white, he's wearing no shirt and being black, and how that kind of flips around the conversation somewhat. Um, the video starts with him killing somebody, and then immediately with like as he's talking about this is America you know rapping these bars about contraband drug dealing all this type of shit he got like students behind him um, again like another reflection of like all the mass school shootings that's been happening um, as of recently um, including Parkland including Sandy Hook including um, Caliban uh, um, Caliban uh, including Columbine and all this kind of stuff too um, a lot of other imagery they present in this he, you know there's also that scene of the choir singing and then that's he comes also in. commentary on the yeah and the church shootings with Dylan Dylan Roof who killed nine people um, back in 2015 and uh, the the church and and uh, and um, and First Baptist Church in and and North in North Carolina Charleston North Carolina there's also uh, the church shooting that happened recently in in, uh, in Sutherland Texas. Um, I think Southern Springs, Texas, where 26 people were killed in the church as well. So it's again, it's a lot of commentary that's being said here. A lot of ample stuff that's like very important, very relevant, I feel like, um, to the whole culture and discussion of gun violence um, and how the riots that are happening in the background are kind of similar, not similar, but kind of evoke the the kind of uh, the spat, the, the sporadic um, riots that were happening as a result of like police brutality and the Black Lives Matter movement and Ferguson and all that kind of stuff. Not Black Lives Matter movement because Black Lives Matter is not like the protests and the riots, but that's just more of the activism side of it. Um, but it's just it's just so it's just so powerful and, and relevant. There's so many different layers and themes throughout that music video. It's crazy. Like even yeah. you can even argue the ending when he's gonna be in chase by the crowd and by the mm-hmm. mob and. There, there's so many different layers to it that it's definitely interesting for sure when he's dancing on the cars the empty cars and um the lyrics of the of the music video the dances he chooses to do like everything is very much layered and uh, yeah he, he does the block boy uh as soon as <laughs> he did that lot. i was like i'm in i love it i'm in as soon as like watch me and he's like doing that yeah little, yeah i was yeah. like all right i'm, I'm in i'm sold <laughs> yeah, yeah but when he's like dancing with them and and uh the dances he chooses to do are pretty funny too i think that's even relevant within itself like even even that, that episode i just talked about north of the border when they're doing the little snap mm-hmm. i was like you're into snap music remember yeah. when that was the shit yeah. like i don't know if you because when i was in high school that was a shit yeah. you when you were probably like five yeah <laughs> <laughs> but for me that was in high school Happy time. Uh-huh. and that's like that, the snapping like that snapping yeah. was like the shit um, um but then this one i think is also a commentary on i mean most of the actual rap lyrics aren't really saying much and i think that's but he's he's saying like he's he's basically saying watch me move yeah I'm exactly so cool. exactly I'm so pretty. exactly I'm and, so dope. That, and that's exactly what it is it's the whole rap image thing of like how we put on this image i think that's why he was doing like the black boy dance the all this kind of stuff like how uh it's it's it's, it's like how these lyrics are kind of glorifying um, killing and shooting and, and drug violence and I'm sorry, uh, drug dealing and, and gun violence, um, but it's popularized and 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 seen through the eyes of the media as being like this, um, you know, kind of positive thing, not positive thing, but like 
um, is presented in a way through through rap music. Uh, it's like idolized through rap music, to say the least. So. Sure. Yeah. Good deal. Uh, I recommend you guys check out the music video. It's on YouTube if you haven't seen it already. Yeah. Uh, I recommend Childish Gambino. I recommend Atlanta. I recommend Donald Glover. I recommend going out to see Han Solo to support. Hey man, we got we gonna do we're gonna do do we should just do a whole lead up to this man. Like we should do Phil Lord and Chris Miller next week. Oh shit! Uh, you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like the week the movie comes out, we do Ron Howard yeah. and do the spoiler review for for Solo. Yeah. This is usually shit we talk about off camera, but no, I'm, I mean, I'm okay. That's a good idea. You that's know a, I mean? that's a fun idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, k- keep following us on the social medias. Uh, yeah, I want I wanted to talk about SNL. We unfortunately ran out of time, guys. I recommend you guys go check out his SNL skits. There's actually mm-hmm. a lot of skits that are very much socially conscious as well, and have a lot to say about current American culture which is always relevant and it's always interesting to hear different people's opinions. So be positive guys, be a light unto the world and we will be a light unto you. I just made that up, but it's all good. (laughs) And with that, that's the meaning of podcast. We hope you guys enjoyed. Leave us comments. Let us know what is your favorite childish game song. What's your favorite episode of Atlanta? What's your favorite moment in Atlanta? Because there's a lot of fun moments that we probably didn't touch on. Uh, what about community, too? Oh, like, community. Yeah. Uh, I still love the second paintball episode. That's such... <laughs> that's like yeah, my that was favorite. Good. Didn't the Russo direct that one? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the sec- yeah. I mean, the first one's funny and cool, but the second one, they just like, stepped it up. Yeah. Like it It's like literally an like an movie. action yeah, movie. Yeah. It's like 21 Jump Street where it's funny. Uh-huh. And they, they have like... Uh, it's super like Suicide Squad, too, where they have yeah. title cards yeah, come out. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like yeah. camera pan and then... Like Creed, like kill these people, like Creed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, That's probably my all-time favorite uh, community episode. Uh I think it's season two or season two or three. Three, yeah. Um, One of them. But that's that. That episode's hysterical. There's a lot of other funny ones too. I love the one where they're talking about NBC's The Cape. (laughs) Shout out to anyone who saw. (laughs) I remember back when superheroes were. That was the one. That was the one superhero show we had at that time. (laughs) That was. I literally remember that show. They were like, we're gonna bring superheroes to TV and it's like yeah. the cape and it was like it was, the super dark jury like, it's a guy who just flips a cape yeah. and catches shit yeah. and he's like shoo, shoo, and he's like practicing catching shit with his cape yeah. and Abed like, Ab- is Ab- 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 like jury. super yeah. into it yeah. and what's his face Joe McHale is like making fun of him for it Yeah, that one's funny too um, six seasons in a movie these guys yeah. um, favorite Atlanta moment Atlanta episode Donald Glover moment Donald Glover uh, song Childish Gambino Shout out to Childish. I, I could have gone into like a bunch of Childish music stuff because like I have favorite lyrics and stuff like that. But unfortunately, like I said before, we ran out of time. And with that, that's the meaning of podcast, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Share, comment, like, support the homies because we're the homies. And we consider you guys homies too. Uh, and with that, that'll be all for the meaning of podcast. And we are peacing out, guys. Peace out.